What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Four Podcast. It's been a minute since I've done one of these because I've been so busy with other things, but I'm glad to be doing one again in person. You may know him, you may not know him, depending on where you live in the world, but it's na- his name's getting out there. He, uh, one of my favorite characters in Not Scary Farm. Please welcome Mike, aka Death. Hi. How you doing, Mike? Uh, raspier than normal. I feel that. Uh, how was the, uh, the nice drive out here? Uh, pretty uneventful. I only had to pee one time. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that will happen. Um, that's, yeah. I've done that drive many times and... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very well acclimated to it. I don't like to fly. Okay. But I fly for free. Um, that's not a brag. Our, one of my best <laughs> friends works at American <laughs> Airlines, but I'm terrified of flying, so I just choose to drive. What what's the one thing? Is it just is the heights terrify you, or is it everything else? Like, what's the uh, one thing? That I think as the older you get, the more uh, I don't know. Uh, the more in touch I am with my own mortality, right? And okay. uh, it's not you know when you're in the plane, you don't really have a choice. You're already up in the air, but there's like a certain speed that you reach on a runway, where you're like, okay, there's only two ways this ends, <laughs> correctly, or fucking completely incorrectly okay, yeah you, i mean it's true right when the plane speeds up enough to take off i'm just like ooh, but i have kids so like i'll fake it for them i'm like oh my god this is so fun right <laughs> but in my head i'm like oh dude get me the fuck off this plane. <laughs> Ooh, fuck off i can't this stand plane. it i don't know i used to do it a lot as a kid like i used to fly back and forth to hawaii a lot to see family okay but you can't do it no more huh i don't know i don't remember the the, the exact there wasn't anything crazy that happened on a plane I just got on them one day, and I was like, no, fucking, this isn't for me. It was like that scene from Clerks when he's explaining his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'll still do it. I have to fly this. I have to fly out somewhere this month, but. Oh, shit. I always try to find any excuse not to do it. Unless you absolutely need to. Haunt but. is a really good example of that. I go. I could, I could make a 30-minute flight to and from Orange County, but I just. I just choose to make the four-and-a-half-hour drive. Just four and a half hour drive. And a half hour drive. I mean. I know, and, and I don't need to hear the statistics. I hear it from everybody. They're like, dude. Driving is way more dangerous than flying. I'm like, that's great. That's a rational person's perspective. Yeah. My thought, I realize that my fear is completely irrational, but it's fucking scary. I don't know. What do you like when you're doing long drives like that? Are you, are you what, are you, what are you doing? Listen to music, podcasts? Like, what do you, uh, it depends. Yeah. Usually podcasts. Okay. Uh, if a podcast makes me too sleepy, then anything that I can like aggressively air drum to or. That's why he waited so long to come on ours because we made it too sleepy. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. Nah, you, you're a busy man, dude. Between being freaking dad, running your business, everything, man. Yeah. I'd say running a business is... A, 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 I'm less busy running a business after 2021, like, completely fucking tanked. Dude, it was... Uh, most of my business. <laughs> uh, how's the recovery? I mean, it, it seems like you're recovering from there. I see a lot of your shirts. All, designs are dope. Yeah, it's, it's funny because, like, all the new designs are just paying for old, late designs. <laughs> right. But there's really, like, no way around it. And I get, like, you know... As a customer, it sucks to wait for things, but there's really kind of just, for people that don't have an understanding of how businesses work or like, uh, you know, I've been doing my business for 10 years. Right. So even the shirts I printed for Haunt last year, or like some people don't even have those, whether whether they were unable to pick it up when I made them or for whatever reason, like those things were really late. It's just that like the entire world stopped yeah. doing everything. So people that manufacture garments, they stopped. People that, I mean, look, if a company like Starbucks can't get straws, yeah, it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to get anything. Your shirts and yeah. So yeah, things got really late. It sucked. I paid like 15 grand in refunds last year Fuck, for dude. people. I mean, everybody that's followed me for a long time has been giving me a lot of grace. Yeah, you know, they're like, "Oh, we get it." But people oh, yeah. that didn't know me were like commenting on my post and being like, "This dude's a scammer." I'm like, you could literally look at my tagged photos. And uh, see. Yeah, for real. Yeah, I don't fucking know. people. It was, it was completely irrational, but it like triggered my anxiety. So like. I feel like I'm still living under the shadow or, like, in the shadow of 2021. And it's, like, almost... Things are almost caught up, but it's just kind of, like, uh, money is not my enemy at this point. It's, like, time. Time. Because I'll always be able to make money. Mm-hmm. But the longer it takes to make money, the, you know, the the longer amount of time it takes to catch up on those things. Right. You, like, lose trust and, like, grace with your customers. Yeah. So money is not the issue at this point. It's, like, time. I need to do it faster, but... Yay, being a small business owner. <laughs> I mean, you talked a little bit about a shadow. I got a shadow behind me, man. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> What's his face doing? I can't see. I don't know. He's my shadow right now. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. 
In the shadows. In the shadows. Yeah. How you doing, Aaron? All right. Live studio audience. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I brought my son. <laughs> I brought my son. <laughs> I don't know, man. This guy, this guy talks about you all the time. I Every love time him. I talk about him all the time. Yeah. I mean, we were at the photo meet when we first met, officially, and at what the story, you, story what films. What is it, the photo meet? Story films. I've only ever gone to one. Yeah, we, uh, that was the first time I ever actually officially met you. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you said that was the first time you'd ever officially gone to one. No, no, no. That was that was the first time I met you. I was like, I don't want to harp on story films. It seems like a cool idea. Yeah. I just... you only been to one. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of... I mean, <laughs> I, I'm a fucking nerd. Ah. Anybody that knows me, like, well knows... Uh, how nerdy I can be, but there's still some things to me that I'm like, oh, well, as long as, you know, there's something for everybody. I'm glad we live in a world where there are options. Yeah. I just, I think whatever was going on in that particular night, I was just like, huh, huh, <laughs> I'm going to go get a pizza. He did end up getting a pizza, a whole ass so pizza. Good bro. Too. Dude. It was probably one of the like freaking mom pa shops too. No, no, uh, there was a pizza Nista. Oh, wait. Okay. Yeah. It was pizza Nista. Was it? It was super good. But it was like still, it was December, so. That's right. Uh, excuse me. I guess what I do on podcasts is just burp the whole time. That's cool. Um, so every LA was still very much like LA in the lockdown. Like, yeah. I asked if I could like use the restroom, and they're like, no. I'm like, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I think that was when we, that was a convention going on around that time, wasn't it? Yeah, that it? was uh, the Midsummer Scream. Uh, season Screaming? The Season Screaming's version of that. I didn't get to go to that, but it sounded uh, fun. I mean,. Was it? I also did L.A. Comic Con that same month, and it, you could tell, I don't know, L.A. was hurting super hard. Yeah, no, you see that a lot in events. People that were vaccinated had to bring their paperwork. People that weren't vaccinated had to bring negative tests, and I think both people just, like, didn't want to deal with the hassle. Yeah. And L.A. Comic Con is under the umbrella of San Diego Comic Con, so in yeah. theory, it's always going to be, like, a banger of a show. Yeah. But you could definitely tell that things were still very tight in the city of Los Angeles. Kind of felt that a lot, too, around just haunt season in general. I mean, when I would go to a lot of the haunts, you could tell there was on, was, they're very I, low staffed, everything. I lived in, you know, I live in Arizona. I've lived there for like six or seven years now. Yeah. So all of the pandemic, I was there. And I saw that people were trying. Didn't the car wash happen during? Car wash happened during the pandemic. Um, there was mostly home haunts. Drive, there was a lot of drive through events, but. As a super Halloween aficionado. How did you, how did you feel about the car wash? Um, I mean, it was fun for what it was. It, it was, it was something to actually do. I think that was the main thing is just trying to find shit to do during haunt season. And I only saw everything th through the lens of the internet. Right. And it looked cool. I mean, it, it was cool that year. There was a lot of people that year, but I think because that everyone there wasn't things open to do, so everyone was trying to find something to do. So that year in 2020, there was a lot. Last year there wasn't a lot of people, but. Because that's because everything opened up again, so... I don't know. I have a completely different worldview of how things could or could not have gone during that entire time. I honestly, dude, I just... I was glad to have something. Because I would have been so mad if I just had to sit here. I just stayed at home shit. with crippling anxiety. <sighs> not about going out. I didn't care about that. I just developed... Uh, I, I developed a... Uh, what my therapist would describe as a... A pretty decent panic disorder. <laughs> I developed like anxiety. I've never had really that I was aware of my entire life. So I got anxiety and like panic disorder, which uh, just sort of manifested itself towards the end of 2019. Yeah. And not for, out of like fear of any COVID or any of that. That stuff didn't bother me. I don't yeah. know what it was. It was like whatever, subconscious. But, dude, I had a panic attack so bad I thought I was having a heart attack. Oh, shit. And I went to the hospital, and they're like, have you considered that you have anxiety? I was like, well, fucking now, I guess. <laughs> they're like, yeah, your heart's totally fine. Like, I wore a heart monitor. But, man, like, for a few months there, I was going through it. Dude, no, that was, that was I think that was me when, when depression finally hit during 2020. I was just coming in here and doing the same thing every fucking day, like, reliving the same life. It was fun in the beginning, but then I was like... I'm not in high school anymore, dude. Like, I like to go out and do things now. I got a car. I can actually go places. Like, I was just stuck in here every day reliving the same fucking life. Like I said, it was fun in the beginning. Resident Evil freaking, I think, three remaster dropped. And I was like, that's <laughs> fun. I could fucking, and I beat that all in one night. I was like, well, I got nothing to do. Oh, now. my God. We played so much uh, Apex. I think our, uh, mine and Aaron's mutual friend, Chris, uh, convinced me eventually to download Apex Legends. Yeah. Because, um, uh, 
I'm not going to self-diagnose myself, but I will say that I'm a really hard person to get to try new things. Right. If I like a thing, I like a thing, and that's my thing. And yeah. if anybody tries to get me to download new video games or anything like that, um, <laughs> I just won't, I won't do it. And it's like a, I know that it's like a really bad habit of mine. But I finally downloaded Apex, and I played it, and I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> and then I wanted to play it all the time, and it was kind of like our way, like but between my, I keep a uh, very like tight friend circle, like a small group, and those are my best friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was our way to communicate through the pandemic. But then I become annoying about it because when I like something, then that's all I want to do. Yeah. So then I'm like, hey man, let's play Apex tonight, and then you know like, uh, Aaron, who's like a game snob, oh, I don't want to do battle royales tonight, like her. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> or whatever. We can be playing something else. But and then I Destiny. eventually. I eventually tried Fortnite like not that long ago because they put out a Moon Knight skin and I was like, okay, well now I have to finally download this game. <laughs> and then I saw all the skins that had been released before that and I'm like, god damn it, dude. Yeah. Like no one, I saw the co- the um the Herald of Galactus Thor skin. Yeah. I was like, oh, so no one was going to tell me that this was on here? <laughs> like I, I fully like they they did their job. Fortnite marketed towards the right demographic. Oh yeah. Which was me. <laughs> I was like, there's a Terminator skin. I was like, dude. yeah, dude, they have like DC in there and shit now. And he's coming like, on. Call of Duty you. released a bunch of really cool skins, but you couldn't make me play that game. And by you couldn't make me, I mean, I probably played it two or three times with Aaron and like our other friend, Greg. And I was just like, this fucking game sucks. Yeah. No. But in regards to being depressed, I mean, I, I liked, I mean, I imagined and I hoped that people would be more empathetic towards people that were anxious or depressed during the pandemic. Because they're like, you know, now all of a sudden all these people that maybe weren't depressed or didn't know they were depressed or didn't know they were anxious are now, like, really fully f- fully feeling the effects of that. Yeah. And I thought, oh, maybe this will make people more empathetic towards people with that, you know. I don't know if it did. People are just... I found, I found ways around that. I started actually... Uh, luckily for me, my comic book store was still running during Let's COVID. Go. He found out ways. Like, in the beginning, he was like, I'll deliver to your house. Like, you could schedule for a pickup. Like... Anything oh, yeah. you want in your pool. Where do you go? Uh, Atomic Comics and Artesia. It's a, yeah, it's like... Yeah, there you go. It's just, um, it was great, dude. That place is really good. They have a lot of omnibus because I, I sold my long boxes a long time ago. Yeah. My goal, I've said this a million times, is to basically be like Belle from Beauty and the Beast where I have a bookshelf that I can fucking just ride a ladder across. Yeah. So the whole center of... I'll show you a picture of it later. Like the center is just all omnibus and then the big, uh, the two big tall shelves are like all my hardcovers and like trades. All my fucking. But Atomic is shelf, like right around the corner. I'll look around the corner. <laughs> Let's see. Got like Preacher, yeah. a lot of DC stuff. The um, boys, I'm reading the boys right so now. So I still shop at um, Pulp Fiction in Long Beach. They have. I've a, been there one time. They have and a I Carson liked it. location, but I'll ride for that store forever because even yeah. though I live out there, you know, uh, am I pl- I'm plugging Pulp Fiction right now. Um, yeah, so hell Pulp yeah. Fiction is on Anaheim in Long Beach, and uh, they have a Carson location. But go to Long Beach one. Uh, it, all their books are 30% off all the time. So, especially when you're buying, like, a $150 book or, like, $125 omnibus, yeah. 30% off, it, That's it's not, like, a sale. It's, like, all the time. So if you want to go get, like, badass hardcovers, I just always pre-order them there. I and they have, mail yeah. me my books. So. I used to have an omnibus. I forget what it was of, but I used to have one. It's a dangerous habit. I see that you have a lot of dangerous habits in this room. Yeah, I do. And it's Omnis, very much. Omnis are great because you get the whole story. Yeah. Or most of the story. Yeah. Like Preacher, it's in two volumes instead of eight of the big yeah. deluxe. I think I have them all. <laughs> uh, all of the Garth, Garth Ennis Punisher books, I have like each one. Yeah. 50 to 60 issues each. That's awesome. Dude, I love them. You, and they're big enough that you could beat someone to death if you needed to. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. But if you're going to conventions and you want to get your books signed, it's a real heavy habit. Yes. So if you have like three of those motherfuckers in a bag, it's just like... Bringing back the memories of high yeah. school again. Fucking having I feel to carry like Book of Eli. Yeah, yeah for real. No, nah, I'm like fucking right now. I'm I'm reading uh, the boys, book three because I always okay. read them every season it comes out. I always read them in between when but I you have to wait read it before the show. No, that's cool though. So I, like that. I read one and two. I loved them. Uh, the show was what got me into them, and I was like, I got to see what the books were like. I've heard they're, they're like even better. Wild. Yeah. Oh yeah. Same thing with preacher. Yeah, There's preacher. Like, yeah, it was so good, and the show think, was great people too. People always like to to say. Well, I don't want them to pull any punches on the show, so I won't watch it. I'm like, when you read the source material of any Garth Ennis book, you'll realize why they couldn't put that on television. Yep. Because it's batshit insane. Yep. Especially, did you read Preacher all the way through? I did. But, like, all the stuff with, like, the descendants of Christ being, like, mentally... Whatever I got up there and stuff, yeah. (laughs) It's, like, it gets... It's great because it's an English guy writing about, like, Hicks. Yeah. So when you go, like, why are these people, like, weirdly racist? I'm like, this is what this guy thought 
people they, from Texas yep. would be like when this book was written. And it's hilarious. But uh, Garth, I mean, Garth Ennis is incredible. He actually just wrote a recent book called A Walk Through Hell. Uh, there's this company called Aftershock. They're like a small, okay. small like independent comic book publisher. Right. But it was like a 12 issue, 12 issue book called A Walk Through Hell that is less. Um, his books are very punchy. You know what I mean? Yep. There's a lot of humor yep, in yep. all of the tragedy. Yeah. A Walk Through Hell is just dark. It's like these two detectives show up at a warehouse where like these cops inform them that everybody they've sent in has committed suicide, suicide damn hasn't come out like an entire SWAT team came out and they all like shot each other and no one can figure out why wow. and I won't spoil it but they go in and it gets, it's really twisted I read that but it's a fantastic book I thought, well those are one of my favorite all time stories and then they made it into a game which was really it was um, I always loved Dante's Inferno oh yeah that's such a good you know divine comedy all that stuff like yeah, yeah. such a good I have the actual divine comedy yeah uh, but where it's like all the books consolidated into one yeah that's yeah. such a good story dude and then you see like that's probably where he got a big inspiration from you anything know I mean? with hell is good yeah. source material yeah yeah or anything like anything like with religious connections is always it's really always good, good source, source material. yeah for real I mean you see like a lot of these movies a lot of these like you know these books stories and everything and it's like when they in, impact like heaven versus hell kind of thing like it's really dope i think that's one of the reasons why i actually like um who did it really good fuck i forgot there's a couple couple things that have done it good supernatural has done it really good i like supernatural okay, I watched that you're show gonna for have years. to forgive me because every single person that has loved that show is like okay you have to watch it but then they also tell me my least favorite thing to hear about a show is where like you just have to get through the first season no, I, I shouldn't have to get through the first season. I like season. the first season, actually. If the show is good, it should be good from the first season. Yeah. On. No, the first season is actually really good. There's a lot that happens in the first season that starts that starts setting it up for different paths, well, I think. Well, then for you, I'll give it another go because the fandom is so big that you can't really ignore it. Yeah. But I watched the first couple episodes and it like I didn't love it. I, I fucking... It does get better as it goes, but that first season, that, that especially when it hits the end, it starts getting really good, starts setting up more stuff, starts setting up more That's of a storyline. That's how line. Buffy was. Yeah, Buffy was fucking... I love Buffy. But then uh, also, when Buffy ended, when they did the comic books for it, it it continued. So instead of, like, volume one, the comic books are titled, like, season nine, yeah, issue one. So they did it from where the show ended. Did the same thing with Smallville. When Smallville ended, they did Smallville season 11. They brought the cool in Batman. The thing about all those shows, too, is, like... I can suspend disbelief, so whenever people watch movies or television shows based on comics and they're always, like, harping on, like, well, that's not what happened in the book. Yeah. I was like, you just let it be its own thing. It's like if you look at Iron Man making Ultron. Yeah. yeah. We know that Hank Pym made Ultron, but Hank Pym wasn't in the movies yet, so just yep. let the goddamn guy that Literally the next has been <laughs> making robots the whole movie. Literally the next movie. <laughs> let, let, just like, you know what I mean, though? Like, yeah. You'd be like, oh, well, Iron Man didn't make those. I was like, yeah, but as far as you know, if you haven't read the books, this is the robot guy. Yeah. Let him be the robot guy. Exactly. Don't be weird about it. But The Walking Dead is like a great what if. There is no Daryl Dixon in the book. Yeah. But there is in the show. And, and he's a fantastic fucking, part. And he's the fucking most popular character on the show. Yeah. And I heard a lot of people stopped watching the television series after Glenn bit it. Which is funny because when they were doing all the Negan ads, like like the Negan showing up in the show, I was like, you guys are going to be so bummed. Like, whatever happens here. And even Negan is pretty like... I love reasonable Negan. in the television series. Yeah, I just love Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yeah, phenomenal great actor. actor yeah. He was even great when he spent all like all of Grey's Anatomy in a hospital bed, yeah. dying. Like, <laughs> and he's in Supernatural. Oh, he is. He's the he's their dad. Shit. Okay. So that's why you got to watch it. Well, but yeah, that's why Boys and Preacher are fun. I'm, I Preacher <sighs> is a very uh, muted version of the comic book, but the actors that are in it are so compelling. they bring it alive. So entertaining. Cassidy in that show is so good. The only show that I'm bummed that they did based on a, a Kirkman book that seemed to like not really hit was um, Outcast. So Robert Kirkman. I was reading that a little bit. Oh, I remember man, reading that. So good. It's about demonic possession. Yeah, I was reading. I think I started reading like the first couple of issues when it first came out. Like, I remember that. It's not like you know. It's not so on the nose, but the idea is like, so this guy when you first meet Kyle, he's living alone. Yeah. He's got this very isolated life, and you realize that his mom had abused him and so he like beat the crap out of his mom but you find out it's because that she was possessed oh and then okay. later in life he grew out of that really crazy and abusive time he got married and had a daughter then one day his wife starts displaying all the traits that his mom had and he realized that whatever this was has possessed his wife uh. so the wife tries to hurt the daughter he beats the wife up the Shit. demon leaves and now he's charged with Domestic violence. He loses custody of his kid. 
no one's going to believe that, you know, yeah. your wife's possessed by a demon. So he's That's living fucked. this isolated life and this thing starts to come back and there's a connection between him and the, the, the demon. Oh, my God. It's, dude. It sounds like a wild ride. It's honestly. some of Kirkman's best work, but it's not Walking Dead. It's not Invincible. So I think maybe good. it probably didn't get a lot of the love that it did. Yeah, Invincible was fucking phenomenal. Yeah, I still got now. Good. I got to read it, but just watching the show, oh, I was like, the book, dude. Oh, I know. I bet it's probably way better. So good. Yeah, it's just like the boys. Like the show is really fucking good, but then the books are like the guy it that they got to play Homelander is incredible. Yeah, like he, he scares the fuck out of me, dude. It, like every time he looks right? at you in the camera, I'm just he's like, he's so good at being totally unhinged. Where you're like, you can see that someone is on the border of losing it, and then mm-hmm. also, how do you beat Superman? Yeah. You're like, oh, I don't want to piss this guy off. Also, he could fucking murk. You didn't watch today's episode, though. All of us. No, I didn't start season three. Oh. (laughs) I know. I hear it. But in my defense. You watched today's episode? Oh, it's probably the best one yet. Hands down. In my defense, I've read the entire story all the way through. Yeah. So if that sort of like, if that gate keeps me just like a little bit of points, I'm going to watch it when it's done. But I had just finished Peaky Blinders. I need to start Peaky that. Peaky Blinders just period. easy to finish because it was six episodes. A lot of, like, in any show that's on BBC or, like, any, like, UK show, yeah. they always do, like, three. Like, Sherlock was three episodes. Well, I, I had heard for Sherlock they because they, they filmed on their schedule. Like, and if they were doing something, they would stop filming and just oh, wait till sure. their schedule but opens up. in general, a lot of those shows, I mean. Oh, they the film, only, yeah, they do film them different, yeah. I think the only BBC show that I know of, and I don't know of a ton of them, that have, like, multiple episode seasons are, like, Downton Abbey and, um, Doctor Who. Yeah, because Doctor Who would do like <laughs> four or five episodes, then take like half the year off, and then come back with like the the last half of the season, and then go into the Christmas special. I'm like, the fuck? Yep. And I got I got into Doctor Who, I think, as late as anybody, just because of the Blink episode. But the problem with starting with Blink is you're seeing the absolute best episode of Doctor Who, and then you have to work your route from that. And then you're kind of, I, I imagine it what, what it must be like to be a drug addict, where you're just chasing... <laughs> the high that you felt the first time. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, none of these other episodes are Blink. Yep. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, I don't care about Daleks or any of that. <laughs> I just want to see more of the Blink episode. And then, so, of course, when they revisit the Weeping Angels, you're like, yeah. <laughs> and like, okay, so 2.3 episodes of Doctor Who. <laughs> 2.3, uh, bro. Peaky Blinders was great. I gotta watch that. But so good. it does, n- it's not, uh, it's not over. They're not gonna do another season, but the I'm not spoiling anything. They're gonna do a movie, aren't they? They're gonna do a movie. Yeah. And, it definitely feels like that because when you finally finish the final episode, and who does that? Is that sh- is that Showtime or is that HBO? Netflix. Who does it? Netflix? Netflix? It's Netflix. Yeah, it's Netflix. Okay. But I mean, that show is like a cheat code. They put like Tom Hardy and Killian Murphy and all these phenomenal actors. Got Tom Hardy, yada yada. Oh my God! Excuse me. Tom Hardy plays the most obnoxious version of his character work. Like, the character Believe that it. he plays in that is he's maybe... such a fantastic actor. It's it's maybe the best thing that Tom Hardy's ever played. Really? Yeah, he's so good. Damn, I gotta see it. I gotta and watch Killian it. Killian Murphy in that entire series is so good. I'm currently watching um, Umbrella Academy right now. I'm trying so to finish that So, I gotta up. watch season two of Umbrella Academy. Uh, and three now. I'll watch, I'll watch Stranger Things. I also have the... I, I read Umbrella Academy when that came out. I gotta out read that, yeah. I heard they're a lot different than what the show is, but I'm still, little, I'm still wanting to read but it. But all the people in the show are great. Yeah. Oh, they're so, amazing. Yeah. I, I had to watch season one twice because I think that at the at the time when it came out I just didn't I didn't it didn't really do anything for me yeah and then once I was able to like go back and watch it all the way through once I had because sometimes I'll be in my office like packing orders or like kind of distracted and I'll put it on as white noise yeah and if I'm not like totally in I'm just like okay I yeah take it or leave it the best comic book show that they had done in a really long time got canceled after the first season it was Deadly Class. Dude, he's so mad. he's Aaron's he's mad I just yeah <laughs> because he just told me you gotta watch Deadly Class. I'm like I'm reading the graphic novel right now. I was like, but I don't want to watch it only for the sole purposes. I know it's not getting renewed unless Netflix out of nowhere just goes. We bought the rights. We're gonna keep going. Dude, it was like the I can, the only thing that I can relate it to. You was, told me about that. It felt <laughs> like when Kingdom Hearts had ended, or no, Kingdom Hearts two, and you're like, there's never gonna be another one. Like, they're never going to make this. That's what Deadly Class felt like. It was like yeah, sci-fi canceled a bunch of shows for no reason. I do. <laughs> Are you getting emotional? No, no, no. I want... I honestly want... I want... Go on. The team that is doing the boys to pick up Deadly Class. That would be good. That's... Uh, I, think Seth only, I think Seth only does Garth Ennis books at this point. 
Invincible was, juice, they're Invincible was NS2? Huh? Invincible was NS2? No, The Boys. Did he say Invincible or The Boys? Well, because Rogan, Seth Rogan did Invincible too. He produced that as well. Oh, that's right. He did. Yeah. He does a lot. I think he's just doing indie comics at this point because he's trying to get eyes well, on the I don't know who's. I don't know who's doing Sandman, but Sandman's in production. Yeah, that's going to be coming out soon, actually. But I wonder what they're going to do about Sandman because Sandman in the first, like, issues directly ties it. Like, you see how closely Vertigo relates to DC? Yeah. Vertigo is obviously owned by DC Comics. The dark label. And at label. one point, it's the, the black main character of Sandman goes, like, through, like, the DC universe looking for something of his without spoiling it. Like, he encounters Batman and all these characters. So I wonder if that show's going to be, like, attached Fucking to Fucking hope so, man. But uh, Swamp Thing and Deadly Class both got canceled. I did like... Yeah, Swamp Thing was good, too. That was... Oh, God, that was so well shot. Then Witch McCall did that, too, um, who did uh, Saw and all them, right? Fucking, uh, what's was his it? Name? And he did Aquaman. Where's the uh, producer on this podcast that looks things up? Aaron, since you're here, can what's you up? just Google things that we talk about? Yeah, so yeah. We- here, Wikipedia. Yeah, okay, what am I looking up? Because I had Pokemon Go open. Oh, <laughs> you play Pokemon Go? You ain't gonna find shit here, bro. It's true, I couldn't. Yeah, it's fucking the dead zone here. Uh, who, who produced uh, Swamp Thing? It's the guy who did Saul. I forget his name, though. Um, What's he, his name? He, he did, in, like, did, Insidious, did Insidious. He did Conjuring. Like, yeah. I don't know. But Deadly Class is, is it, a phenomenal comic, and that show is incredible. Is it Len Wiseman? No. Who is it? No. Dude. I gotta look through all of this. Hold on, I can tell you the name once he I He also did it. Aquaman. I should know his name, but I can't think of it right now. James Wan? James Wan. Thank you. James he didn't Wan. do Swamp Thing, did he? He produced yeah. it. He produced oh, it. Oh, okay. That's why I knew it was going to be pretty good, because well, I knew he was going to be... Uh, and the, the fucking costume was amazing. It but was all De- practical. But Deadly Class might be one of the best comic book adaptations to a TV show, and then they canceled it. So Fucking Wong is in that shit, too, bro. It was like... Oh, he's it's so good. Every I know, and I don't want to watch it because I know there's you not a season two. You said you're reading two. the book, though? Yeah, I'm just, reading the first Every book. single no, actor that they cast in that show for every character in that book is fucking amazing. I love the concept of the book of like him talking to himself and him kind of like Well, the best thing about stuff. that is like, that like, like it. it's not autobiographical, but um, Rick Remender, the guy that wrote it, grew up as a punk in the 80s. Yeah. And there are things that happen in the book that sort of happen to him. Like there's a scene where uh, all the uh, a bunch of the kids at school beat the shit out of Marcus, the main character. That happened to Rick when he was living in Arizona. So, like, he was a punk rocker in, like, the Reagan era, and he was living in Arizona at the time, and he said he was just walking down the street, and, like, a bunch of cholos saw him, and they're like, oh, that guy. And they beat him, like, almost into a coma. Like, he had to Jesus go to the hospital. Christ. So some of the stuff that happens in the book is, like, closely related to his his life. He write, he include. I mean, if you read his Punisher run, he includes a lot of punk... Uh, Easter eggs. Like, when he wrote Punisher, there was, like, you know, all these wrote, posters in Micro's lab. Who wrote Doom Patrol? Doom Patrol was, well, Doom Patrol's been written by a bunch of different people. But the one that they're basing the show off of more. Probably Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison. Wow. Yeah. I wonder if Grant Morrison was a big punk fan, because in that show... Grant you Morrison's see, a rocker. Yeah, because in that show, Robot Man's always wearing punk t-shirts. Um, so, Doom Patrol got taken over by Gerard Way. That's what it is. Uh, Gerard Way got his own sub-division of DC Comics called Young Animal. Yeah. And he basically took his favorite comics... Um, there's also some original stuff that he wrote and then uh, a bunch of stuff that kind of went under the radar. So from what I read, uh, Gerard basically went to DC offices and was like, let me just read through your archives. Yeah. And he picked these like really obscure characters that never really went anywhere, but they were all kind of weird and definitely in his wheelhouse. Yeah. And he was just like, oh, uh, Cave Carson has a cybernetic eye is one of his books. So like things like that. And then Doom Patrol, because um, Gerard Way's a huge Grant Morrison fan. Grant Morrison is... Oh, fuck. I don't want to get in trouble. He's Scottish. I'm pretty sure he's Scottish. I've met him a bunch of times. I'm a huge fan. I think he might. What's Grant Morrison? I'm looking it up. Good man. Also, side note on Rick Remeter. He wrote Deadpool the best. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Dugan's run on uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. That Deadpool like story where he was like looking for his daughter. That was a really good Deadpool story. Okay. Here on Comic Talk... Um, <laughs> this going to be a podcast, bro. Don't even get me started. Oh my god. What he's Scottish. Frick? What the frick? Uh, so, yeah, anyway. Gerard You're right. He's a, he's a giant Grant Moore. He's Scottish? Yeah. Yeah. But when I say he's a rocker, I've met him a bunch of times. I'm a huge fanboy. Yeah. Obviously, I like comics. Every time I met him, fucking leather jacket. Like, he's so goddamn cool. He owns like a fucking castle on Scotland, doesn't he? That doesn't shock me if that's true. I think he does. He just, that's where he writes for everything. He lives he out there and he everything. He does like a lot of psychedelics. Like, he's like, and but like his level of cool when you meet him 
That's why I call him like a rocker. Like, he hates someone. He hates another writer. That's another big writer. Uh, oh, I'm, there's so many to hate. Who wrote? Is it, is did it he Alan write? Moore? No. He yeah. Me. Is it? He wrote Watchmen, right? Yeah. Yeah, he hates him. Okay. They're, to be fair, Alan Moore. I think they're like tough to love. From what I've heard, I don't know if it's true, and I respect it if they both are. They're somewhat. Uh, they dig into the actual like warlock world like of wizardry and everything so they actually do spells and shit but like i said i don't care they're still great writers fucking keep writing the i don't want to i don't want to speak out of turn i think that alan moore is a dirty commie like me ah but uh he's there's a political connection in everything that, in everything oh, yeah. that he writes you can see it even back when he was writing swamp thing yeah like uh he has a like a really good understanding of politics and just like the Some world at large so funny. <laughs> but uh he also notoriously hates everything that people make of his Yes. So they did the Watchmen movie. They did uh, what is the Johnny Depp one from Hell? Um, Johnny Depp. From I have that book. Then they did League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Those are all Alan Moore. Oh. Every time they've ever done anything of his as a film, he's he's just he shits on it. Oh yeah, I've heard about that. He's like an eccentric guy, but you know you're also allowed to dislike those things. And I when they like... did before Watchmen, they offered him so much money. They're like, hey, we're gonna do a prequel to the Watchmen comic. We'll give you double. He said no. <laughs> they quadrupled it. He said no. He's like, I have no interest in that whatsoever. So that's why the Before Watchmen comic came out, and it was like all these different writers and artists. It was like a yeah. anthology almost. Like every different character was yeah. written by every different person. Because he was like, no, fuck that. I don't want anything to do with it. I like the show. The show was really fucking good. On the HBO. HBO series Watchmen? Yeah. I didn't get to watch it. I heard oh, it was, awesome it was fucking good, bro. Uh, the movie uh, and, was perfect. Well, like, because this one was actually like a direct sequel to the actual book, the show. <gasps> so, like, a lot of the things that, you don't like it? <laughs> I was just no. oh. <laughs> what did I do? No, I, said, I just heard. Oh. No, I said no. Oh. <laughs> and I'll whisper. And I'll whisper. No, no, no. He was good, Rorschach. Yeah, very You're good. Rorschach. Here with me. He's also <laughs> a very good Freddy. He's a very just a very good actor in general. I still water in my mouth. He was so good as Freddy. So good. But he gets pigeonholed in that Freddy group goes. of people, like people that are like, oh, remakes are dumb. I'm like, no, remakes aren't dumb. I'm glad I'm not the only one that does hey, like that, that. Nightmare on Elm that Street Nightmare is a really corny good. movie. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that does that. that like, so it. to say that the remake is corny, as if the original weren't corny, no. But the, the remake, the not reason that, you hey man, listen, Blumhouse might be working on getting freaking Robert England back to do. That's what I hear. I and that have, I mean, he got motherfucking one of the ladies from The Exorcist to come back for a sequel. Shitting on remakes of things is so annoying to me because people act like. It, Nightmare on Elm Street was corny when it came out. Yeah. The only difference is nothing like that existed yet. So the first time you see it, you have the sense of nostalgia. You're very protective over it. But it was corny. Oh, 100%. It doesn't matter what year it comes out. A guy in your nightmares that's just like, you, you bitch. Like, that's super corny. Just because they redid it in the 2000s, it's not more corny. You just already understand the idea. Yeah. That's like everybody that shit on the new Ghostbusters. My name is Mike Beggs. And I approve this message. If you shit on the new Ghostbusters... No, the female one? No, any of them. Oh. Fuck you. I after, love the female one. All of them are good. Hey, Afterlife is That prob- one's great. Afterlife is, is incredible. Is I cried. Yes. It's the perfect film. So anybody that hates on those movies can catch his hands. I like the female one. Everybody always shits in, on that in movie. the Western lot. I'm just saying I hate that. The female one was incredible. However, I do like these remakes of horror films being actually, like, scary. Yeah. Like, I the remake the of Evil movies- Dead and the remake of Nightmare. Yo, Evil Dead. They didn't like the remake of Pet Cemetery, though. Incredible. You don't like which one? The remake of Pet Cemetery. I felt like they made Zelda scarier in the original I than they did in this one. I didn't watch that because it just. Didn't I'd say do give it a watch just to give your opinion. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you've seen the original one, obviously, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and it, uh, my only issue was. This shit was fucking terrifying. Like, for the most part, I liked the guy who, who played the main character. It was fucking John Connor and uh, the fucked up Terminator t- universe, whatever that, that is now. But. Um, the awesome verse. Oh God, it's great. It's he great films. Also, he but it's was also like, Howard and Lawless. Yeah, you should have been there, Howard. But he <laughs> fucking. Uh, it was good, but Zelda, like for me, was way scary and way more traumatizing when I was little watching the original than I when I watched this one. I was like, that's fair. Like, you're not that scary. Like um, the only remakes that, the, as a matter of fact, the only remakes or prequels of anything that came out that I was like 100 percent pass was any of like the Leatherface stuff. It's horrible. So the the Jessica Beale Texas Chainsaw was cool. I Texas like Chainsaw that 3D. That was the, wait. I also like the Jordan oh, wait. Brewster one. Is that the two thousand one? Two thousand. They did the remake and then they did the beginning. Those were good. But, but the, the Leatherface and all right? that stuff. Which From one? Ta- the one with um, I think her name is pronounced Jordana, right? Jordana. Texas the, Chainsaw Jordana. 3D. 
Uh, the one that was in Fast and Furious. I had to adjust the height on my seat so that That's fine. when I look over to see at you, see at you, to see at you. I, I, I feel like I'm talking to, what's his name, Wilson? <laughs> oh, yeah. From Home Improvement? Hey, hey there, Tim. <laughs> we may not be able to see him, but the cameras will see him fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's the, the, the remakes that 2001 2003 were really good. They're gory yeah, yeah, as fuck, yeah. and I like them. And that's what really started gore. That, that started that genre of gore horror. What, yeah, the, whatever the one with Jessica Biel I thought was really good. That's the one with like the really like, aggressive leather face. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. The, he was, it's funny because I, and I Army, know the actor. Army. Uh, Arlie Army. Arlie, yeah, he was the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was good. Great and, he's great. He loved that guy. He's great in Frighteners, too. You ever watch Frighteners? Saving Silverman. I, I, Have you seen I, Frighteners? I've no, seen no, Frighteners, no. yeah. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Arlie yeah. Emery plays himself in Full Metal Jacket, but as a ghost. It's the one with Michael J. It's Fox, yeah. where he's like scamming people. I think it's on HBO Max. He's like got I'll these two HBO friends Max. that are ghosts. He scams people by like, you know, uh, doing fake poltergeists and like yeah. clearing the demon. I'm, I'm giving a really shitty description. <laughs> but uh, Jake Busey's in it. <laughs> hey. Uh, no, that was good. Uh, Peter... Um, Oh my god, I'm embarrassed. Peter Vincent? What? Uh, Lord of the Rings. Peter Jackson? Thank you. Why the fuck did I just forget Peter Jackson's name? Wait. Scale of 1 to 10. How big, big of a Lord, get, of, get out. how big of a Lord of the Rings fan am I? 1 to 10. 10. I just forgot Peter Jackson's name. <laughs> so, nine and, you're now 9. <laughs> anyway, I apologize. Peter Jackson did Frighteners. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that movie was great. Uh, you're going to hate me for this. I do not. I don't like Lord of the Rings. You don't want you know what? I don't like Lord of the Rings. I wanted. Oh, uh, it's okay. I've seen them all. But Nobody's perfect. I yeah. wanted. I wanted Peter Jackson to do the Warcraft films. Yeah, man, I watched that. I think I watched Warcraft. No, what year did it come out? Two thousand twelve, right? No, 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 no. It was like twenty fifteen. It was like when I remember Warcraft was like kind of hot at the time too. Well, I mean, it wasn't a terrible film. Maybe I'm thinking they, of Beowulf, they just but they crammed, both sucked. They crammed too much story into one film. Because there is a lot of lore in Warcraft. I'm going to have like to take lot. your word for that. Because you convinced me to download that game, and I played the tutorial for about an hour, and I was like, you know what? It's not for me. It's so good. There's a whole world of Warcraft out there. It's I not didn't get for to you. see any of it. South Park, you know, they liked it, so. Did they? They did a whole episode <laughs> on it, so. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I think I'm. Came in 2016. I'm not going to be welcome into the world of Warcraft. <laughs> it's fine. It's not for everyone. You're welcome to the world of Nights But also. Though. He doesn't like he doesn't like uh, Lord, Lord of the, the Rings. Rings. I didn't like War, World of Warcraft. What don't you like that's popular? Um, he doesn't like the new Resident Evil games. I yeah, I don't like Village and I don't like Biohazard. Biohazard, I love them. Uh, I think I Village think, was fucking I, amazing. I, I dude. think I don't they, have an opinion on Biohazard. I think but Village was cool. I Village think they amazing. lost touch of what Resident Evil was. I think Sorry, if, we're getting four remastered. I think if if they dropped the Resident Evil titles, they would be like more appealing to me. Do you think that they lost touch with what made Resident Evil good or you're just you you are no longer fresh enough to the story to feel that same thing you felt when the first You could turn around and see how much I all fanboy of Resident Evil 8 right there. I met all those people. There you go. All of the above? I loved them. It's great. Resident Evil 2 Dual Shock came out when I was in high school and it was so sick and then they what had that game mode you? where you run backwards through Raccoon City to try to like what year? to disarm the bomb. You know what, what year ended, was that? A long time ago. I'm 38. How old are you? Wait, what year was it, though? Resident Evil 2 DualShock came out when I was a junior in high school, so it would have been 2000 or 1999 or something like that. Where were you? Middle school? No. A child? Middle school? Child? I was a child. A human child. A human I, child. I was 9, 10. <laughs> he picked me up with his mind powers and he shook me like a dog. <laughs> it's true! I saw the whole thing! It that's came out a long be, time that's ago. That's supposed to be Dash, by the way. I played it, by the way, in my friend's house that was haunted. So See, that was neat. Yeah, so I think <laughs> those games like really lost touch of what Resident Evil made Resident Evil. Resident Evil 4 is coming out right now. You know what? That's going to be fun. I think yeah, right now we're going to go ahead and start a petition then and write them. Be like, listen, well, guys. I mean... The, you've done it, a lot of phenomenal work, but my friend Aaron thinks your product sucks. I don't think it sucks. I just think that they lost touch of what Resident Evil made. Like, I think that Fatal Frame 2 is the scariest video game ever made. There's that new game. Did you see that one that they announced at ETH or the, the Summer of Games thing? Like, it looks like looks kind of like a scarier Metroid. Looks all disgusting with like bugs and shit. Oh, oh, that's um, Callisto Protocol. Yeah, that's fucking. Uh, What's it called? Uh, I think it's called Callisto Protocol. Oh. Did you play the core yet? No, not yet. Damn it. Let's I played play it. until dawn, and 
uh, that was a long uh, time ago. Excuse so. me. A That's barista good. at Starbucks yesterday asked me if I played Dead by Daylight. She's like, I stream Dead by Daylight. I was like, you would get along with my friend Aaron. Hey, just saying, I've been trying to hook you up now for a while, bro. Raider Girl was not it. Stop. Fuck it. What was the other one? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. <laughs> trying to hey, oh, I tried to hook him up with the Raider chick at the Santa Fe Spring Swap Me. What's Didn't that? that? Well, there was this girl wearing a Raider jersey. She was drinking a michelada. I tried to hook him up. Uh, Sublime tribute. It was, yeah. Didn't work out. You were at a Sublime. That was I, time, I was time out. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I wasn't let's vibing. Go, let's go two steps back. You were at a Sublime tribute show? Hell yeah. That's a, that's a level of fandom that. I like Sublime. Yeah. There's something for everybody. Yeah. There is. You don't like Sublime? Uh, I know I, he don't like Sublime. I like he, one song. What song is that? Yeah, waiting for my Ruka, bro. You know what? I'm not even going to front right now. All of 40 Ounces of Freedom is cool. Oh, yeah. I just think that it beat itself into a coma until I just didn't want to hear it. And now it's, like, lumped in with, like, respectfully, like, you know, Sugar Ray 311. It's, like, that era of music that we were just, like, inundated with by MTV at that point in time. And I just... Jackass is saving music and, and, and MTV alone. Jackass so, 4.5 is way better than the actual Some film. sublime super fan is going to see this podcast. See Watch it. It's so like, good. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Wait, what? Nah, said, bro. Some you the homie. Some super fan is going to watch this podcast and be like, fuck that guy. Well, we, we haven't even gotten to your haunt stuff yet. So, I mean, that, I mean What's we haunt? Just, exactly. What is that? Yeah. Uh, no, it's this only, is the it's, shit that people want to hear me talk it's only about. Two thir- it's only two-thirds of my yes. job here on Nights of Horror. The other one... Third is uh, that's okay. I've only ever done one haunt po- podcast, and I talked mostly about Boardwalk. And I'm sure eighty people, eighty percent of the people that heard it were like, "You were in Boardwalk." <laughs> you you were in Boardwalk. It's true. I saw the whole thing. <laughs> you were in Forsaken. No, nah. no. Nah. You were in Never. Forsaken. Never. For- Forsaken. Never. Never. You were in uh, Paranormal. I was li- uh, line control. Line <laughs> control. You were in Paranormal. For Paranormal, I was line control. <laughs> you, were, you, were the, you were one of these in Paranormal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's you how I was controlling really the good. lines. You know who else was really good in Paranormal? Uh, David Woods. Was he? Yeah, he was fire. He was so good. I worked there in 2016. He's... There was a Def Gal in it this year that was fucking incredible. I, I, I say Def Gal not to be disrespectful. I don't know her name. I just know she's deaf. But was... uh, you know the morgue tray? She slid backwards on the morgue tray and then literally disappeared. I stopped in that room and was like, Oh, shit, auditions are tomorrow. Where'd she yeah. go? Oh shit! I forgot all about. It. I was for like, "That's him? why he's here too." He's he's doing. Well, no, 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 he's doing. He's he's doing he's Sunday, aren't you? I know, but he's doing an. You're doing an event this weekend, right? And then you're here to do. Yes. And then you're here to do audition. But by the time this comes out, it'll be over. Yeah. So how was the event? <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> you should have seen it. How was auditions, bro? It. Nuts it or what? It did it. Sucked. They were awful. Yeah, I heard he sucked at it too. I I was. Every, I, I guarantee that every year. <laughs> by the time this episode comes out, I will have also sucked at auditions. Yeah. Where are you trying to? Where are you trying to go this year? Um, oh, we got <laughs> we got to keep that secret. Uh, what is the laser street zone? What was it called? The Hollow, Shit, Dark Realm. <laughs> yeah, Dark Realm. Trying Fallout. To go Where are you trying to go this year? Infected. I want to be one of the army guys in Fallout. <laughs> uh, I'm actually uh, trying out for Beowulf. Hell yeah! Yeah, you, you better say one line the entire fucking night. If you hold a gun to my head right now and you're like. You fucking better. You better say one line from what Beowulf. What if I held a Freddy knife you? from a Freddy from the I would, I would. I would say. Lock it Beowulf. I. And I would hope that that was Beowulf. a line from the movie. I'm sure someone says Beowulf in that movie, right? Someone has to. They have to. I think the main character. Bowf. Bowf. Couldn't tie a sentence together from that film. I don't know. Look, Aaron. See, you completed the set. Yeah, nice I know that prop. the maze Beowulf featured members of the band Rotting Out. Do you know this? Fun fact for any of you punk rockers out there. Couldn't yeah. make it as a punker. I only like vandalized. Well. Couldn't make it as a punker. Excuse me. I'm just saying. Uh, hey, like, Dropkick like Murphys, sick, sick, Bad yeah. Religion. I do like Bad Religion. Punk the best in the thing park, that Dropkick November Murphys 5th. recently did was calling out those fucking white supremacist dudes to come meet them in the park in Boston. Those motherfuckers <laughs> are gangster, bro. <laughs> That's, so good. That's the Irish punk for you, bro. They don't fuck around. I mean, the Irish don't fuck around in general. Yeah, Irish are badass. What's a panini? What? I don't know. So, uh, no. I feel like we'll get some weird results for that. So, death. Where'd yes. that Where'd that character come from? Uh, rejection. Yeah. Uh, I I had an oh, I had an idea for a character, and it got shot down. And I think I probably talked about this before, but um, 
because I'm so nerdy, I can't do anything by half measures. Mm -hmm. So when I thought of a ghost town character, I couldn't just be like, uh, you know, I'm a cowboy or I'm this. Yeah. Like, I didn't just want to get my foot in the door. It had to be something that canonically, like, related to the story. So I knew that the original character I had was going to be called the Spirit of the West. Not like the movie Rango. Um, but it was just going to be a guy who had been killed. Like, if you think of all the ways you could die in Oregon Trail, that was going to be the character. But my idea was to look like a ghost and, you know, every day I would come into work, uh, my, my face would be the same, but, you know, I'd have, like, gunshot wounds in my costume or a noose or, like, a hatchet or, a, I don't know, you know, just, like, all, all the, the different stuff. ways you could die in the West. Yeah. That idea got shot down because they were like, well, you, you can't change characters every night. And I was like, no, I'd be the same character. I would just have wardrobe changes. I would make all my own stuff. I don't think I really... I, I just sounded like a good idea at the time, but if I hadn't got shot down, then I wouldn't have come up with the idea of death because... I think when they shot that idea down, I had I like really started taking the idea of being in Ghost Town seriously because mm -hmm. I had already, I already knew I was leaving Boardwalk, and um, when they shot that down, it was also at a time in my life that everything was just kind of miserable, and I was like, all right, for real, like what do I want to be? And I was thinking about the witch and how if I were going to be a character in Ghost Town, I thought the paranormal aspect had been underutilized. I know that everybody there was like a creature or a ghost or whatever, but there, it just felt like there was like more to use. Right. Because I was no longer in Boardwalk where I had to be some variation of a clown. And I wasn't in whatever camp was at the time. I wasn't in Necropolis. So I just, it felt like there was more to use. Yeah. And so I thought about the witch and I was like, well, it would be cooler to be the enemy of the witch rather than be a subject or like some subservient creature or townsfolk. And I was like, Death. Death would be the ultimate coolest character. Death is the thing that I'm most terrified of uh, as a fictional character or a character. It's an incredible idea. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool if there were a character that were just like the nemesis, the nemesis of the witch? Like somebody that directly like was the arch rival. Not rival, but you know. So uh, on a whim, I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to be Death. So rather than be a ghost in Ghost Town, I'll be the person that sort of ushers all these spirits. Or um, I like it. And it was like a last-minute decision. And I auditioned for it, and they approved me, <laughs> which I didn't think was going to happen. So then it became more real, like, oh, fuck, I actually have to do this. <laughs> <clears throat> and all the fictional aspects of it I had uh, come up with before the physical aspects, like... Before I even knew what I looked like, I kind of knew what my character arc was. Mm -hmm. I knew that Sarah Marshall had been killed and, you know, took her revenge on this town. But from a fictional a aspect, when you're preventing, like, hundreds of people from dying, that's sort of an infringement on the natural order. And death would come to Calico to punish Sarah, not those people. Because she used whatever magic she used to keep these people alive, which is a no-no for me. And I'm trying to get Sarah. So uh, I'm sort of an indifferent character in the zone. But I knew all that weird shit because I'm a dork. <laughs> like, yeah. I'd come up with all that character stuff before I even knew what I was going to do there. I mean, I, I've i literally just sat in Ghost Town at night just thinking of characters like, that would be cool. That would yeah. be cool. You know what I mean? Like, just because that's just me reading comic books. I and like, it's selfish. Yeah. Because the irony is that no, no guest will ever get to appreciate, like, the intricacy of those ideas. And I used to make this joke when I was in Boardwalk because a lot of people would give me these backstories like, oh, well, my clown escaped from a mental asylum and na 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 I'm like, hey, man, what guest is going to care? Yeah. If you can't emote those things with your character or if those things, if you're not wearing those things on your sleeve in a way that guests can see, none of it matters. And I realize how hypocritical it is for me to all these years later be a character with this really convoluted, complicated story after shitting on all the clowns that used to be board hogs, me be like, dude, who cares? If they can't tell what you are by looking at you or by your actions, because I always say, you're never going to scare someone and go like, rah, by the way, 256 <laughs> years ago, I rose from the grave. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. when you see a barber in Ghost Town, or you see AJ, you go, dude's probably a barber. You see... Yo, can I get a shave? You see Gloria and go, probably a bride. Those are things that you can see. And ironically, without knowing She's my bride. backstory, people could look at me and tell that I was death, which means I kind of, like, nailed the idea. But, yeah, there's definitely, like, a way nerdy backstory to it. What about the connection between you and, and Lucille's character? Because I think that's hilarious. 
so that's just like a so from an employee standpoint, they, people always try to get people to run together. Like, oh, if it's your first year, go find someone to run with, which I think is bullshit. Yeah. You should just work within your comfort zone. If you feel like you need help, you should be able to reach out and ask for it or ask a vet and run with someone. So I've always found that running with people, if it's forced, is never gonna. you're never going to have great chemistry. Right. And I had worked with Lucio a couple years before really running with him. But he was also going through this like self-evolution. Like You could see his character slowly become hostile like it wasn't quite there when he had the raggedy hair yeah like i think he had an it's like anything like you have an idea of what you want to do and then you sort of get to know that character right so the the first year whatever year it was that he really nailed it it was like really attractive like it was like a character that i was like oh yeah like this is this is a character i would want to watch and as i could see that he was sort of like a detached person or like you know unwell it reminded me of Bram Stoker's Dracula oh, so because good. the character Renfield, he's locked up in this asylum, right? And he's telling people, I'm working for Dracula. Every little life I collect, a bug, anything, it's for my master. From a regular person's perspective, the people that worked in the asylum, the police, they're like, this dude's out of his mind. But Renfield knows that he works for Dracula. Renfield's getting his own movie, by the way. Well, there you go. When Nicolas Cage is playing Dracula. But he really does work for Dracula, no matter how crazy he thinks, or everybody thinks he is. So that was kind of Lucio's character. Okay. Lucio's character was one of the only characters that can communicate with the character Death, but it wouldn't matter because anybody that he said that to would think he was crazy. So I'm kind of like a, a shitty Jiminy Cricket to his character. <laughs> like, he's constantly losing his mind every night on streets, and I'm sort of egging it on. But our characters are equally, I think, uh, unnerving. I found it funny last year when you were just throwing them around. Oh, yeah, that was great. That was great. I don't know. Who came up with that one, you or him? Probably me. That was funny. I've always found that, like, it, uh, acts of aggression towards your friends will scare people. <laughs> so in Decade Brigade, we used to do this thing where I would run and lay down, and Steve-O would stand on my back like a surfboard. Yeah. But we would do stuff like that at Boardwalk when we were together. And, like, if you can use your friend as a thunder jug instead of a thunder jug, it scares the shit out of people. Oh, yeah. Because nobody... a human. They expect you to run up on them and do whatever you do. Nobody expects you to run up on them and throw your friend face first into the ground, which is, like, so goddamn aggressive. And guests are like... You know what I mean? Like... Aaron, you need to stand up. What do you mean? <laughs> you need to throw more people on the ground. Yeah, you need to throw oh, more people. Well, Actually, you have a if lake. I, if I get my character in Ghost Town this year, I promise you, nobody's ready for it. I'm ready. I'm ready. No, you're not. I am. <laughs> no, I've always I, I loved totally, that character, dude. I totally forgot Renfield was Tom Waits. Yeah. You just looked at that while you're... Yeah, I was like trying to remember. He like, always has like the best little cameos in films. Yeah. But anyway... That's just like Lucio's character. It's not quite um, Adam Jahan. Adam is like a loose cannon. He's his own thing. But with Lucio, he has an equal amount. I, I got all the big slidey shit out of the way when I was in Boardwalk. I jumped off of tables and did all this crazy stuff. And I really wanted to do like a creepy character. I like the idea of people just avoiding me for being me. Not because I'm not, I'm not harping on sliding. I still slide even though no one seems to notice. <laughs> like, I've seen you slide a couple times, actually. <laughs> um, I did a slide last season, and somebody was like, dang, you're really good at that. I'm like, thanks, man. It was my first time. <laughs> it was like, my first time. Uh, but I like the idea of a character that's so menacing or uh, unnerving that people will just avoid you by, by nature of you just being yourself. Like, Gloria does Gloria things. And some people see that. Obviously, they most of the fanboys... It's, it's like a really pretty spirit. They like want to watch her and shit like that. Nah. But they're, I've definitely <laughs> seen people that see her and go like, you know what? I'm going to go the other way. Tell that to Barrera. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, uh, <laughs> so many people. I'm honestly jealous of people like that, though. What, that are scared of the bride? No, just scared of any character. Oh, well, um, if it makes you feel better, Jean, the original bride, is the goddamn devil. And I did not like her. I heard you were telling me about that. Because oh Matt, was, Matt was telling him about... <laughs> Uh, he's scared of Gloa. He was like, you don't, he, you, no. <laughs> I will tell this story a million times and it will not make it le any less true. I don't care who believes me or what your opinion on these things are. These are the, these are my accounts of the events as they unfolded. <laughs> so if you've been backstage, you know where Cruise Nest is. I do. Cruise Nest is about a hundred yards away from Warehouse P. Maybe that's accurate. Maybe I know that whole backstage. Wherever you walk into Warehouse P versus Cru ne Cruise Nest, not close. Yeah. So me and my friend were standing outside of Cruise Nest enjoying a cool beverage. 
and I look down, all the way down to the entrance of Warehouse P, and Jean is walking in in character, and she stops and goes, and looks straight down there at me, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and that was like, you know, one of many encounters. Here's another thing. In my heyday in Boardwalk, I was, a, I was very fast. It's not like I'm just old and falling apart now. But when I was probably at my fastest, my friends and I used to go scare at Western. My favorite thing to do at uh, opening when we had Western Gate open, because it wasn't always open, yeah. was stand there as a clown and mad dog guests. I did nothing. I didn't chirp at them. I didn't talk. I'd just stand there and be like this. And people were just like, uh, what the fuck? <laughs> so I would stand in there, and at some point during the night, someone goes, oh, my God, let's go to Western. So something's happening at Western, and they got me. And I'm, I'm not easy to trick. So I go to Western. We're dicking around over there. We're getting scares. And then I look to my immediate left, and Gene is there. And I'm like, that's cool. I'm out. So I go to leave, and a bunch of my friends grabbed me. So they're trying to get Gene to be creepy. And I get out of it, and I run full speed back to uh, Charles Schultz, the theater. Yeah, yeah. Which from there, I don't know, like 50-yard dash. I haul ass. I had, I think I fell. Or one of my friends caught me over there. Like Big Papa was the guy that used to be there. Yeah. Like he bumped into me and grabbed me. And this is me sprinting full speed. So I go straight from Western to the theater. I stop. I turn around. She's right behind me. Look, I'm not making any judgments about Gene as a person. But I promise you... She's nowhere as fast as I was back then. She's probably not even as fast as I am now. So explain to me how I said all the way over there and I turn around, she's there. This motherfucker goes full flash mode and fucking quick so She either like, teleported or was hovering behind me the whole time. This is fucking nurse. And that's what I firmly work. believe. I'm truly sure. Jean, jealous. uh I don't know if she still works day ops in the park, but Charlene, the other wit the original witch. Yeah. They both worked day ops. Like, one worked, um... One was a tour guide there, and the other one did the spindly yarn thingy. I don't know. Cotton candy. You know, the things that make... Yeah, it's like a, no, yeah, I know what he's talking make, about. I don't know what it's called. But anyway, I don't know if they still work there or not, but Jean was fucking... <laughs> she was terrifying. I've heard stories about her. Her vibe as a bride was different. Yeah, that's what everybody tells me. Like, Glow and Jean's are two different. Um... Gloria Thanks. is just great at whatever she does. She's got a very whimsical sort of nature. And her it's movement. very alluring. Yeah. And her Jean would do that like a siren though. Like she like if she could if she could trick you near her, then she was just a fucking ghoul. <laughs> I hated her. What are you gonna say? And Glow's movement is she just It's perfect. Glides. She everywhere. she's meant she's I feel like she's meant to be that character. I was there I saw all the people they tried out for that character before Gloria too. And I, they, uh, Haley was another one, and she did a phenomenal job. But I think that Gloria was meant to be that character. How much more years do you think she has in her? What's that? How much more years do you think she might have in her? I can. Never, I, everybody. Everybody's different. I know. I, I hear. I hear a lot of people recently being like, "I'm going to quit at the 50th." I'm like, "Why? What's the significance?" Yeah, 50 years. It's like I don't know. maybe it's a well, goal. It's not 50 years for you if you've been. Yeah, working that's what I'm saying. Years, yeah, actually. it's like what if you've only been there for like 10 years? Dog, it's not your 50th fucking year. mooch. <laughs> you haven't even been alive 50 years. So how can you say you know what I mean? I was thinking about doing Shacktoberfest. <laughs> no, he wasn't! Honestly? What do you think the scariest thing would be at Shacktoberfest? A three-pointer? Fucking no. Shack. Beep, 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 beep. Hey. I made a basketball joke. Okay, so. What was it? What was the movie he did? Kazam? That'd be the fucking scariest movie. The one that doesn't exist? Yeah. No, no, no. That's Shazam with uh, Sinbad. I That's wanna the be, one that doesn't exist. I want to be in the Not Shaq yet. Diesel maze. Oh, it, it did exist. Do you think but. they'll have a maze for each one of his albums? Shaq Fu? Shaq Diesel? I don't want to say I that. I stole one. those tapes from Kmart when I was a kid. <laughs> grown Ups too. Was he in Grown Ups? He was in Grown Ups too. But a cop. It was pretty bad. I'm gonna go to Shacktoberfest. I don't care. You go. Yeah. I'll go. I'll go just to experience it. Because I had, I had a really bad experience at Dark Harbor in 2017. What was the bad experience? It wasn't fun. Why? I don't know. Like so, I caught like. Like Did you know like, everybody at the time, too? No, I didn't know anybody at the time. Cause I, I think it'd be I, different now. It was, like, right before I started working my first season. Okay. Um, so I went to TwitchCon 20, 2017, and the after party was Dark Harbor. It was part of the event. Oh, that's right. I remember. Was that, that. Long Beach? Yeah. The convention? Mm hmm So when we went, like, I went through mazes, and there was, like, no talent. And then I saw, like, one talent in one of the mazes, and they are just on their phone. 
It, like, when really, I went, it really bummed me out. I thought that the after party for TwitchCon for Dark Harbor, though, that it wasn't full cast. If right. I remember correctly, it wasn't fully uh, staffed. Like, why wouldn't you have it fully staffed? I'm I don't like, know, but when you walk through mazes at Dark Harbor, as far as, I mean, all the times that I've ever gone, it's not like there's a ton of people. They're creepy. The boat ones are creepy on their own. Well, that's, that's what one, I mean. Yeah. There's always that's these the one long that I areas. The person on the phone was on the boat maze. <laughs> I know it was a fucking ghost on the like, phone. And they kind of just bummed me out because I wanted, you know, to experience. That's a bummer. Yeah. I always really like Dark Harbor. Yeah. If nothing else, then for to walk to walk through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The boat. Like I think like the street talent, like I guess that's what they would call them, right? Street talent. Uh, they were fun to watch. Still walkers, right? There was a that guy was cool, that would walk like, around Dark Harbor playing a guitar and, like, making jokes, but he was in makeup. That guy was fucking phenomenal. I remember stapling a $5 bill on some one of the guys. Outside of the freak show thing? Yeah. Oh, no, he was just walking around like a staple gun. He was like... I just thought all the mazes were really good. Lullab- Lullaby is always going to be my favorite maze. Lullaby's great. Scary Mary's my favorite character from that. Sam? From Dark Harbor. Sam's Dude, great. Dude, Sam posted a picture, and she won't tell me if it's real or not, recently, and it's fucking scary. So she said, uh... She went down in the pool in Lullaby, and she said she felt something push her over. And then all of a sudden the fogger kicked on, and then one of the security guards, I guess, uh, in her maze was like, uh, or, or she told him, like, hey, while you're up there, take a picture of me down here. And then took a picture, and then the guy, I guess, saw the camera and was like, you gotta get the fuck out of there. And in the picture, it looks like there's three people in the pool area with her. They want him. They want to join But she won't tell me whether or not it's a real photo. It looks creepy. Yeah. Sam, if you're listening, Sam, I need to know if that photo is real. Sam, I want to talk to Sam. I want to talk to Sam. What about your boardwalk days? That's not. I, I now that's something that I don't know too much about you. Apparently, no one knows too much about it. I I just <laughs> I know you more for death. That's why I've seen you. Like when I started seeing you on Instagram and stuff, it was that character. When I went to go to the event, it was that uh, character. I had an Instagram back then too. Hashtag boardwalk snowball. Okay. It's I didn't still have an there? account for my character, but I had a hashtag. What? Oh, I was just I was just bummed that I didn't get to experience snowball, and we fucking lived together when you were snowball. You never went? No, I never went. Damn. Yeah, I was a real piece of shit. What a nerd. <laughs> um. What years was that one? Two thousand nine to two thousand thirteen. Just had started going back to the event. Two thousand twelve. Two thousand nine. Yeah. 2013 was my last year. In Boardwalk? And the regulators came and killed me. Regulators! Uh, I don't know. Uh, I was a clown. Reluctantly. <laughs> Reluctant. Well, I was, again, my nerdy nature was just like, oh, well, if this is a carnival, then there are various aspects of a carnival that we could, like, you know, be characters for. But then I slowly found out that that's not true. We could only be clowns. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I want to be a dirty carny. They're like, okay, well, you can be a clown carny. I'm like, all right, cool. I guess I'm a clown. So I was a clown, but I was the groundskeeper, and that was my character. Sounds a lot of fun. That was just my way of uh, being aggressively rude to people (laughs) and uh, getting a pass. What are some of your fondest and funnest memories of that zone? (laughs) 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 Fucking devilish laugh back there. I feel like... Uh, the boots, the boots butthole story, which is not boots is butthole. What? I, I recently just told Lucio this, but so there was a photo booth we used to have in Boardwalk, <laughs> and uh, we used to when people put money in the photo booth, you can see the light go off at the bottom. So any talent walking by, we used to be able to say, "Oh, someone put money in. The camera's about to go off." We would let like the first photo go, and we knew that we could jump in and scare them. And the objective was just to try to ruin. Or make a fun moment, you know. In the photo booth. In the photo booth. Yeah. Because you couldn't, it's not digital, you can't do takesies, backsies. Yeah. But, uh, so we jumped in and this girl was showing her asshole to the camera. What? That was a thing that happened. Um, getting, <laughs> pissing off a lot of celebrities. Steve Warmbier is here, not here to speak for himself, but he was already pissing off Justin Bieber. And uh, we went over and heckled him at the basketball game. This is, like, back when he was deleting. He was, like, dating Selena Gomez. He was, like, really young. But we got him to throw a basketball at us. uh, Threatening to drown Katy Perry. Oh, hell yeah. In the lake at Boardwalk. Wait, don't you have another Katy Perry story? 
the, that was that one where I told her to shut the hell up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I didn't know it was Katy Perry. <laughs> the guy, this guy Jason that used to take photos came through and he was like talking to me and I was we were shooting the shit while I was in character, like scaring on the midway. Yeah, the midway used to be different, but these two, he used to take like celebrity photos. I don't know, like officially or unofficially for the park. Like yeah. whenever they did social media stuff back then, it was usually his photos. Right. But there was like these two skeleton face paint, like fan, like um, guests in skeleton face paint just talking and I go like they were talking they were with Jason and talking while we were trying to talk and I don't remember exactly what I said but I just like looked at him and I go for the rest of the time that we're here shut up don't interrupt us I was like I'm dead serious I swear to god if you make another noise I'm gonna drown you in that lake right there and then it was just like they were like totally shocked and then after backstage he was like Oh my god, that was so funny when you told Katy Perry that you were gonna ch- like drown her in the lake. You're like, what? I was like, oh, it's neat. I didn't know it was Katy Perry. Um, we got up to a lot of shenanigans that did or didn't really happen. Boardwalk was really fun. I, I mean, a- at the time, it was the most fun I'd ever had at Knotts. Uh, it was my favorite character I was at the time. Uh, I just felt like we took something that maybe a lot of people. I I, I don't know how other people saw it. I just like I can only speak from my my perspective I just felt like a lot of people looked at Boardwalk as just like a like a throwaway zone for a, for a time but by the second and third year like everybody wanted to be in Boardwalk yeah we had a, like 30 more talent there than we used to have there was a lot of really cool original concept and ideas going around I can't speculate why they're not there anymore there's a lot of really good people in Boardwalk now it feels like the first time in a long time that there's like this big like revitalization in the zone yeah whether it was like you know a lot of the Dark Harbor kids coming there who are super fucking talented or I don't know there's people that it feels like they want to be there yeah. because most of the people that left Boardwalk we had had our fill I left because I felt like if, if you love something let it go you know like I had done everything that I could possibly do for that character and then I was just over it I didn't necessarily want to be I, I had no aspirations to be in Ghost Town when I started working there I know that a lot of people always are like you know I knew from the moment I was born <laughs> that I was, I was Sounds like a fucking origin story over here. <laughs> Weirdo stuff. I could, I didn't go to Knotts when people went to Knotts. You know, I can't speak for anybody. I don't. I'm sure when they went there, go, I mean, Ghost Town was the shit. But I just didn't have that experience. Like I want, it was its own thing. I was a fan of it without having to be in it. And Boardwalk was my thing. That was that thing for me. Like I saw something that I didn't necessarily think was. Like I don't care about clowns. I didn't want to be a clown. I think that, like, being scared of clowns is silly. But I saw that other people were scared of clowns. And I was like, oh, I think there's something here. And I had a bunch of friends or, you know, acquaintances in Boardwalk that convinced me to come over. And, yeah, we just got up to a lot of dumb shit. We used to go to the costume, the the Warehouse P costume sale. When uh, The Hanging did 300. You know how The Hanging always has, like, pop culture culture. references? Yeah. So they're selling off of their old hanging shit. And they had all the Spartan uniforms from, from 300. And all the clowns bought it. Because I found it and Adam Roman found it. And we're like, okay, look, we all have to buy these. <laughs> so we bought the helmet and the cape. And we went around just dominating things as Spartans. So people were in the photo booth. We were outside of the photo booth just like punching and kicking it and stabbing it with swords. <laughs> like we were just like, charge it like they would in 300. Just like, <laughs> Remember the commercials where it was like, what's in your wallet? Yeah. And like, to the neighbors. Yeah. Someone was on a bench. We would just start like shaking the bench. And that was back when Craig was still there. So I remember we had dominated all these things in Boardwalk. Like we had uh, terrorized the photo booth, terrorized this bench. And then we're like, let's go to Ghost Town. So we all go running for Calico Fuck. back when we were allowed to go to the tracks. Yeah. We get there and Craig was already at the tracks. He goes, you're not doing that. And we're like, back to the zone. <laughs> like, back to Boardwalk. He like, said, I don't know. you're not doing that. Yeah, we just did a bunch of dumb shenanigans. That's always the fun things, though, man. That's what makes those things memorable and just fun for not only you guys, but for people who get to see that. I definitely pissed off a lot of guests when I was there, who like more so than <laughs> anywhere else I ever was, because I kind of figured out a way to be like a button pusher without quite like bending the rule, but not breaking the rule. Yeah. Yeah, man, I used to harp on a lot of people. I've seen Matt do some fucking questionable things that I just... Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing like this guy. Where's Matt? Let's. Where's I got Matt? some. I got some, up. I got some footage. I want to that. It. I'll be showing you after this podcast. I if I can like find to, it. I like to give Matt a hard time because he feels like a diet cola version of my, my character in Boardwalk. <laughs> my <laughs> diet Doctor Kelp. 
Mr. Pibb. This is very interesting. No, like, his character looks great, but and I think I give him the most. Sh- so my love language for my friends is giving them a hard time. If yeah. I don't like you, I just don't talk to you. By if the I, way, if I give you shit, I'm. This is how we talk shit about Matt all the time because he never wants to be on a podcast. So Who, this Matt? Is, yeah, he doesn't want to be on a podcast. Text so. him right now. Tell him down here. Tell him to come down here. <laughs> call him up right now. I don't have his phone number. I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, call Matt. Be like, hey. We talk, on, my- we talk on like Discord. <laughs> I think I give him the hardest time because his character is the most reminiscent to me of like my old character, but that's why I give him such a hard time. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's cute. You do that, huh? I'm like, oh, you like to spit on your hands and stuff like that. That's neat. <laughs> I mean, could be worse, right? I used to. Could be snowflake. I used to. S- Are any of the managers listening to this? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. I never used to start fights with people. <laughs> right. No, I was definitely a, a button pusher, but I think that also like that's that's a privilege that's afforded to people that can handle themselves in certain situations. Yeah. So, yeah, I absolutely egged on so many people when I was in Boardwalk. It was bad. It was like free therapy. I'm just scared that this is going to go out. He's going to get hired on, and they're going to watch this and then immediately fire him. Matt, come on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Management, if you're listening. Matt. I've been Matt Barrera, and you're listening to the Night's <laughs> War. <laughs> hey, bro. I want to get a relationship with Knott's, okay? You know? Hey. Fire me. I dare you. Arr, arr. <laughs> I'm Matt Burr and I approve this message. That's great, dude. I don't no. know. I just, it was fun. I look back on those times fondly. I can't recall every silly or psychotic thing. I mean, we. Boardwalk was so reckless at one point. I remember sending one of our, our talent. Okay. Whether this person was overly dramatic or not, we scared a girl that was in Boardwalk so bad that she left to go to the ER because she had a heart condition. And we weren't even trying to scare her. I think it might have been a little bit of drama, but like we got sent to Craig's office because we're like, you can't scare your own talent. I was like, well, we didn't, we weren't trying to, but we apparently did. I won't say their name. I'm sure if they ever listen to this, they'll know exactly who they are. But yeah, I got yelled at by my own talent in that zone for unintentionally scaring someone so bad that they had to go. Aaron, you need to step up your game. I I scare, I scare. I do scare one specific person from the hollows. It's one of the witches. I think that she's, we should. We she's should, terrified. We of should me. scare other monsters, huh? I think that everybody should be scared. Well, yeah. If I there's talent that's scared of you, you should scare them. I, she's terrified of my image, so I don't even have to like do anything. She's just she avoids me at all costs. There's and not she really won't run. She's like, oh my god, I'm at dorks the point now. Uh, there's not there's not a character there that really scares me anymore. It's all just fucking entertainment for me now. Yeah, I just look at it like these guys are fucking. At least uh, there was a point in time, cool. like my second year is death, where people would have me come to zones, like talent captains. That because at that time, talent, all the talent captains were former monsters. Like Adam Roman used to make me come to Fiesta and like mess with people. I think that everybody was it. Freddie was scared of balloons. Freddie and Fiesta was scared of balloons. Have you seen the balloon video? He no. didn't like balloons. Like he it's had, called the black phone. He had that weird phobia of balloons, so I took the balloons it's and I was rubbing phone. them against the hood, and it was like. <laughs> It's called globophobia. Globophobia? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have a Why video do you know that? Me starting a person with balloons. You don't like balloons? I don't like latex balloons. Is it really? Wait, you have that too? Yeah. Oh, sick. <laughs> I yeah. got I'm, I'm, I'm acrophobic and I'm globophobic. What's acrophobic? I'm scared of heights. You're scared of acrobats? Oh, I'm scared of heights too. Oh, I'm scared of heights too. Right. I'm with you on airplanes. I hate going on them. I thought it was like a fear of acrobats. But no, uh, no, no. what? That must be some Dick Grayson shit. Ac- or... th- yeah. Acrophobia? Yeah. What do acrobats do? Die. That's three Terrible. orphans that become <laughs> what do you do? Wise vigilantes. Yeah. Justice. They make Dick Grayson's. They make Dick. Hey. Dick right. Grayson's best best Robin ever made. Nightwing, baby. Nightwing. Kyle Higgins, Nightwing. Smacks. Smacks. You know who did a good run was uh, also uh, it was Young Justice, but it was like a three, three or four book run. Oh, graphic novels wise, but it was not a good the run. new Young Justice, right? Uh, I think it was. B- Bendis is writing it now. I think it was when Bendis wrote it. Bendis is writing Young Justice. I got. I, I can pull out the graphic novel. This, this, all this, this podcast is just going hey, conti- to continue to de-evolve into a comic book podcast. It's all good. Uh, Jeff Johns. I didn't realize there was a ring light right there, and I looked right at it. Yeah. How do you not realize? I didn't look. My Jeff intention Johns. was not to look right at it. Jeff Johns. Did you just not assume where the light source is uh, coming from? Green Lantern fan. Yes. He's gonna get a water. Yes. He's dying of thirst. Yes. I'm gonna eat some of these 
Salt and vinegar chips. I ate all my food. Salt and vignette chips. I'm sad. Is that a Ron Swanson pop? No, yeah, it is. That's actually Duke Silver. Wait, where's Duke Silver? I had Duke Silver somewhere. I think he's over there. There's so many pops. I do. I have a lot. A lot of good ones. Where am I? That's the best water I've ever had in my life. Yeah, so, you know, part of the reason, too, of, like, I mean, because Aaron and I, we always talk about you. Uh, Why? Because every, every time we go in the comic book store, if you, like, you ever want to talk about someone that's knowledgeable of comics, you have to, to go talk to Mike. I tell everybody you're in it. Uh, and it, and, and the I'll, reputation lives up to the, the truth. I know a thing or two. A living encyclopedia. It's a bad habit. It's not even a bad habit. Not really. How's it a bad habit? Give me, like, an actual negative from... Being in an encyclopedia of stuff. Okay, I'll give you one that's not necessarily like a super negative, but whenever people are trying to be polite and they want to be relatable, they want to meet you on a common ground. They want to talk to you the things that interest you. Like if somebody were to ask you about gaming, they would expect you to give them a simple answer. What they don't know is how you're going to tell them they need to switch to PC. And then you're going to give them some long-winded answer about some of the gear they could use for gaming and some of your favorite video games. It'd be like if somebody asked you about anime. <laughs> And I don't mean to do it, but people will ask me, like, oh, well, what, what kind of comics should I read? And then I'll just go off on a tangent, which ends up being, like, a three-hour podcast, when I'm sure they just wanted me to say, like, whatever the one suggestion was. What comics should I read? What are you into? I'm into a lot. No. Oh, perfect. I got, trust me, I got a lot to read. <laughs> I got, um, I'm reading Boys right now, Deadly Class. I used um, to manage a comic shop, and people would... I'm going to read that like, next. There you go. I like uh, little Kevin Smith, Guardian Devil. I got That's my um, one. Frank Miller Daredevil shirt right here. There John it is. Jr. Frank Miller, man. Frank Miller, go. Not my favorite artist, but great writer. Frank Miller? Yeah. Uh, stylistically, I think his art's incredible. It depends on what it's what he's drawing. All of his Daredevil stuff was phenomenal. I'll show you other uh, titles that are pretty good right now. That was good. Death of, Death Justice, of the League. Justice League. That's new, though, isn't it? Yeah. Let me see. This is good, too. It's Flashpoint Beyond. That's a sequel to um, Doomsday Clock. Very good. My friend Becky and her boyfriend just wrote the most recent um, Wonder Woman comic. Oh, hell yeah. But it was during that, um, whatever that giant event was that just happened. It was like an alternate time or alternate universe version of everything. Crisis? DC and Mo Marvel do that a lot. Anyway, they just wrote Wonder Woman. It was really good. That's awesome. Becky Cloonan. That is rules. cool. Michael Conrad rule. I had a, I gotta find it somewhere. I had a signed uh, Jim Lee comic that I got in my store that was actually graded and everything. I also have a signed uh, Ralph Garman comic. It was when him and um, Kevin Smith did uh, their run on Batman 66 meets the Green Hornet. Oh, yeah. And I have Kevin Smith's autograph on it, and then I went on Twitter. I'm like, is this your autograph? He replied, yeah, that's me. So I was like, I need to just go to... Oh, one you just of wanted to make sure you didn't get scammed? Yeah, I didn't want... Well, no, the, the, the guy... I bought it from a ton of comics, and he sold me a cheap regard. <clears throat> he sold me for like five, ten bucks each. I think the signatures don't really dictate... Uh, People don't really care if anything has a signature anymore unless it's graded. I I, 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 I only it. wanted it because I love Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. Yeah. And so... It becomes sentimental. Yeah. For me, it's more sentimental. I have my Swamp Thing number one signed by literally Lynn Wine and Bernie Wrights, and they're both passed now. But I would never get that book graded. It's for me. Yeah. Like, that's why all the autographs in here, I got, like, some over there. I got, like, some down there. I got some that are not even framed yet. Those are all sentimental to me. Yeah, there are a lot of things in here. A lot. There's a lot to look at. There's a ticket wall. There's a pick wall. That's signed by Stone Cold Steve Austin? Yes, it is. Let's go. Yeah. I was uh, for the pre-order for WWE 13. He actually really signed a bunch of those. I got uh, the G.I. Joe cards are signed by Sar Sergeant Slaughter up there. Um, Dude, when I was a kid. Signed so J-Lo picture, too. That stole from my dad. Back in my day, before the internet, um, I wrote <laughs> a letter to Space Ghost. And I asked if he would sign something for me, and they sent me back a, a Space Ghost postcard signed by Space Ghost. That's awesome. I don't know where it is now. Best Alex, one of my favorite artists, Alex Ross. Love that picture. Dude, Alex is so crazy because every year you go to San Diego Comic Con, he has this premier two story panel booth. Booth, yeah. And if you know anything about Comic Con, how expensive it is to have a booth there. He's got money. He's had that booth there for years, and his booth is always like an art exhibit. He's very. Uh, he's also very. Um, he's a germaphobe, OCD. 
Oh yeah, yeah. So that's why he like he charges extra. But like at the bottom, I heard the bottom is just all of his art that's for sale, originals it's and it's crazy because they had a giant Alex Ross uh, print at Disneyland. Oh, he's, at yeah. California Adventure, they had this like Geekly of like his Avengers. Well, because he's doing a big run with Marvel right now. He's doing all a bunch of covers for them. So this was this was like ten years ago. Yeah, he's been like, he's not, been it was, like, it was like 900 bucks. Well, he he's uh he's been doing well. He's always been back and forth. It's whoever freelances him. He's, the last the last thing that he worked on that I maybe my favorite thing was Kingdom Come. Kingdom was Come Mark was Wade. phenomenal. Yeah, I love Kingdom Come. And Mark Wade's a champ. I Mark love everything that he writes what? for the most part. You never read Kingdom Come, huh? No. You're missing. You want to borrow it? I stopped reading a lot of stuff. I'm so far behind on Moon Knight, too. See, what he doesn't like to tell anybody is he actually doesn't know how to read. Excuse me? It's true. It's true. I don't know how he to read. He actually only sees everything in binary, like the Matrix. You know, while I have you here, too, after this show, uh, that's the PC over there that I'm been telling you to take a look at. Oh, okay. What it needs. I know it's fucking slow as fuck. Okay. And it's been yeah, dusty because no I haven't been using it. This is the one I've been using. Lately. I love that out of all this incredible memorabilia and collectibles. You didn't forget to post the 22 Jump Street poster. Fuck yeah, bro. When you started getting posters for free at fucking Regal, you don't know what to fucking do with them. You're like, I need to cover this goddamn wall. I respect I it. I have so many posters in, like, storage. It's absurd. I have Who a did this? Uh, I bought that at Halloween Depot. Really? I don't remember the vendor. It was right across from where I was vending. Then there's another one right there. Up there. That's like one of my favorite horror movies of all time. I love Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah. I actually have autographed prints from Grant Kramer and Suzanne Snyder when I met them at CreepyCon. That was awesome. And then the Screamcast at the Technically on Nights of Horror. They technically are on Nights of Horror, man. I got Nev Campbell on there. I got fucking Matthew I need, Lillard. I need Nev's autograph. You because I only should have came down to Monster Palooza, bro. I, had, I already so got Skeet, shy. Matthew, and Jamie before that. Yeah. And then Mad Monster is in Arizona in a week. And oh, they're going to be there? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's going to be cool. I was going to have a booth for that, but it's just like kind of late. Go enjoy like, it, man. Just that's enjoy That's why I was like, it. I'm just going to go. It's like Especially Amazing Comic Con. I want to get a booth for Amazing Comic Con, but I also just want to spend money. I'll go vent for you. There you go. Peter, David, and all I ask are both going to be there. All I ask every day is just buy me food. That's all I ask. Okay, don't do it. We're, we're going to Vegas, hey. Man. We're going to go vent for Mike. We're, we're going to Vegas. You're going to give me anxiety. Going to Vegas is going to give you anxiety? Going to Vegas, bro? I'll drive you to fucking Vegas. We're going to die. We're not going to fucking die. We're going to die. Every night we can all go hang out and chill yeah. in Vegas. Drive through dispensary. That's, huh? that's more me. Yeah, I was like. That's more me, but I, that's, it's exciting. Like Pez? Like you dispensary? drive through, you got a menu of different things, and then you pick up what you want, and they, the window, and boom. So like Pez dispensary? Yeah. Sick. That you won't enjoy this one either, but they got the Taco Bell with all the slushies that are spiked. You said you're going to drive all the way to Vegas to buy a Pez dispenser? No, he was talking about there's a dispensary. I was like, like Pez? Like drive through Oh. Yeah. I'm that. I'm that loser. I don't think it makes you a loser. Yeah. There are dispensaries everywhere, though. Yeah. Is that the only place that has a drive through one? Uh, no, there's one here in California, but it's like all the way out in Palm Springs. Ain't nobody trying to go out there. Yeah, unless I'm going to go out there sure for something, I might as well check it out, but it's all good. I can't really talk shit if you were going to go all the way to Vegas for a drive through dispensary. I drove all the way to Vegas to get Brian Michael Bendis' signature. That's worth it, though. That was back when he, like, had stopped doing... He hadn't done a signing or an event in years. It's fucking the creator so of he did Miles some, Morales, He did bro. some show at a random comic shop in Vegas, and we all drove out. Brian Michael Bendis, dude, uh, Into the Spider-Verse, one of my favorite fucking movies of all time. Animation was great on it. The story was great. That scene, uh, we've all seen, you've seen it, right? It's the best Spider-Man film. Oh, 100%. That scene when he fucking... What's your favorite Spider-Man film? You're going to say far, No Way Home. No Way Home. Okay. I agree. It is Spider-Verse. No Way Home is Spider-Man good. 3, bro. But seeing, seeing all three of them just web-slinging together was... <laughs> Andrew Garfield's redemption scene? Yes. So good. He deserved it. Maybe the best scene in the film. It yeah, is. I got a little emotional when we, we got the Toby uh, Doc Ock reunion. That was pretty good. Trying to they do better. Really, they really hit it on that movie, honestly. Trying to do better. And I'm like, she's fucking I hard trying all to do of better. The, I think all of the Andrew Garfield sad boy moments were probably the best parts in the entire film. Yeah. The best part, he goes, I will not turn into a super villain and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Peter 1, Peter 2. Peter 3. Peter 3. <laughs> what Peter are, 3. I can't remember the exact line where he's just like, oh, it's okay, I'm a, I'm 
I'm not amazing. <laughs> you like, you just, are amazing. He's just oh. like, where, where he's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm like I saw. I want to like, fight an alien. Like, You're amazing. <laughs> he goes, yeah, I fought a giant purple alien. Yeah, I fought some gooey. I want to fight an alien. <laughs> you might. Yeah, let's hope so. What? Venom. So might. Venom three. I'm, I'm glad they're doing a third one. Let's hope we can redeem ourselves from that second one. It won't. I know. I, I know. had high hopes for that movie. There's, you know no, that? Rede- there's no redemption. If they would have made that movie rated R, they would have been a lot better. No, I think that if anybody other than Sony would have made that movie, it would have been great. That's true. Sony's also doing this fucking bad bunny movie with the fucking character that's been in a comic book for like five minutes. They're literally doing a Craven film. My issue... And it's not even how we want it to be. My issue with that is... Looks, and he looks so good. My issue with that is why are you making Spider-Man movies without Spider-Man? Yeah. It's that'd, like... That'd be it. it that's why I like Marvel's little jab at Sony where they got rid of Venom at yeah. the end of the film. Yeah. Where he's like talking and then just disappears. It was like Marvel's way of being like, no, thank you, we're all good. We're going to leave a tiny bit of symbiote out there, and, so we'll, we'll and start And I love something. that Tom Hardy signed on for it. Yeah. Because Tom Hardy just... Not nah, man. The best part of the I'm entire... I'm curious to see what you, think, what you think about Morbius. I didn't watch it. It's not that bad. I didn't. I don't think it looks dumb. I didn't. Wa- that's not why I didn't watch it. It's just I've been very busy. It's, it's just very a busy. movie that didn't need to be made, but it's not bad. Yeah, I liked the Morbius comics. I, I just don't know. I don't like Jared Leto, but I thought he did a really good job in the role. And it, given a different script and given new circumstances, I think he can really nail that and redeem himself. And I don't movie. really have an opinion on Jared Leto. He's been nice to me. He's just a. I think he's talented. I think he just uh, except like for him. Snyder Cut. Uh, I was. I, I didn't like his Joker. Yeah. I do think that arguably, regardless of your opinion of Jared Leto, that Joker's stupid. It's the from the character. It's from the, Jim his... Lee, it's from the Jim Lee Batman, the All Star Batman comic. Oh, his character, his Joker. Yeah. Yeah. There is a Joker wait, wait. that's like all buff and tattooed and ridiculous. Oh, that looking. one. Did you see the Snyder Cut one though? Snyder yeah. Cut that kind of redeemed it. I like that. I one was way like, more. okay, there's less tattoo showing. I like that, and they actually like gave the... him good script. I will watch all of those movies. I don't. Man of Steel was incredible. It's one of the greatest fucking movies ever yeah. made. People, I, I, I watched it the other day. I don't day. I'm understand like, this movie how anybody could complain about that film. All the other DC films, eh, whatever. Uh, Shazam's the best one, in my opinion. Shazam's cool. I think that Black Adam's going to be fucking, I don't know. I think it's going to be fucking amazing. I love the JSA. It's going to be a fun movie. I got high hopes for that. But you actually. can't. Just because a superstar is a superstar doesn't mean they can't be a villain. It's not that, he did, dude. He it's... shouldn't have been an anti-hero. Black Adam's not an anti-hero. I just want to see GSA. That's all I want to see. Yeah, that's sick. I Dr. Fate seeing, is one of my favorite characters. Do- I was like, seeing, seeing Dr. Fate and it's the playing was pretty sick. fucking James Bond, bro. But, so I heard an interview with uh, Joe Carnahan, the guy that directed, like, the A-Team film. He did Smoke and Aces. Yeah. He made a really good statement because he was supposed to direct Bad Boys 3. And he says when a certain... When you have a certain level of fame and you get cast into a movie, it's hard to direct a, f- a superstar in a film because when you're so famous, producers will listen to the actors sometimes over the directors. So if you're Will Smith or Tom Cruise and you're like, hey, I think it would be cool if we change this. Sometimes the producers will be like, well, that's what the superstar wants. That's what we're going to do. So you have a guy like Dwayne Johnson who's so goddamn famous and you put him in Black Adam and now all of a sudden the story is he's an anti-hero. But he's not. Black liked- Adam is... A villain. His. He's a bad, bad person. I agree with that. I like the fact, though, that he's willing to invest to rebuild DC cinematically because he sees a lot of issues with it. And if anyone can actually do it with the idea, that motherfucker's been a producer since fucking Batman v Superman. I'm going to say that the DC cinematic universe will continue to be a giant shit show. Well, I mean, we kind of. True. I mean, The Flash is already fucking doomed. Each one of the films will continue to do their own thing. Batman every was good. Every film would be remade. Yeah, Bat- the Batman was great. I loved Batman. I think that every single one of those movies will continue to have no cohesion. They will. The Flash. I, I, it's, the I just already know it's gonna be it's gonna be a box office failure because I'll of watch all of them. But I'm I gonna just, watch it, Flash. Cause I'm, Flash. I might be alone in this uh, in this opinion. Um, I'm not stoked that Joker's getting a sequel. Yeah, I, I kind of want to see Lady Gaga play Harley Quinn. I think she could do I a really good job. I think honestly, th- I didn't know until just now that Lady Gaga was playing Harley Quinn. I'd, yeah, I'd, I'm not excited for it to get a sequel because I think that one film was enough. Because it seemed more like a, a mental health film rather than like an actual villain story. You know, it was a cool movie, but so yeah, I got I, a th- I got a theory behind it. I though. don't think it needs a sequel. 
Yeah, it's gonna be. Saying. It's gonna be. I guess a uh, supposed to be a musical sequel. A what? what? A musical. <laughs> Fuck it. Why not? No, but I have a We're good theory. I else. actually have a really good theory about that. If you see a lot of the movie, he hears a lot of music in his head. He fucking is always dancing. What if this movie's gonna further go into the psychology of Joker? What if he imagined all on? of it? Exactly. Well, that was the that was the twist ending in the movie, especially when he met all the you know people. It's like, what the fuck was real and what the fuck wasn't. That's know. what I loved about that movie. At the end, I was like, was regardless this all of whether real or not it's or good, I think it's just like a yeah. testament to yeah, DC. I don't think that Warner Brother has any oversight. Todd Phillips is doing it. So something. the way that the way that Kevin Feige is for the Marvel universe, how he keeps cohesion, he makes sure that everybody's sort of falling in. They don't have that. I Jeff guess Jeff Johns at one point was supposed to be that. No, Jeff Johns. But I think they, they either canned him or they demoted him. But he, there's uh, no one overseeing those projects, and that's the reason they're all over. the Discovery, because I guess they they just merge. They did the merge with Warner Brothers. They have a huge say so on what's going on, and they want to stay. That's what they want to do is get a Kevin Feige to kind of like finally organize what's going to be part of like a ongoing shared universe and what's going to be its yeah. own separate thing. The, the, the problem, Universal Monster Universe was supposed to be getting a relaunch God too. Damn it! Don't remind me of it. Invisible. Man I liked the Mummy. I did. I'm sorry. I liked it. I didn't watch it. I, I like. I fucking. Yeah, you're a big Tom Cruise guy. I am. Hey, I think Man you would great. like it because of him alone. Yeah. It's on the voodoo. You gotta watch the voodoo. Okay. Yeah. But Tom Cruise, fucking Johnny Depp was gonna be the Invisible Man, bro. Fucking. Nah, that movie was perfect. Invisible Man. No, was great. but yeah. like in the original, Invisible Man was great. Don't get me wrong. But in the Monster Universe, they had casted Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man, Angelina Jolie as the Bride, okay. Javier Bardem as the fucking monster. Damn. Yeah. That would've been sick. Javier but dude as the monster yeah perfect fucking anyone in my opinion anyone that can do justice to the bride as far as look wise go Angelina Jolie could pull that shit off why not Johnny Depp as the fucking invisible man that could have been fucking freaky he would have looked great he would have looked yeah I'm sorry but still like he's fucking creepy enough to play that character yeah 100% fucking who's gonna play Dracula they didn't get that far yet they yeah. wanted to they wanted to get that far but fucking just bring him back they in the mummy they tease the creature Luke Evans do they? They tease the fucking creature in the Mummy movie. And we have our first look at, at fucking uh, Mr. Hyde and Dr. Jackal. Just bring him back. Fucking love that character, bro. Bring and it was back. played by, guess who? Russell fucking Crowe. Russell Crowe played Dr. Jackal? Mr. Yes. Hyde? And it was fucking brilliant, That's dude. all in the Mummy? That's all in the Mummy. Okay, well then I'll watch the Mummy. Bring back Luke Evans for Dracula. Dracula Untold? Yeah. I don't think that Top was the same three, universe, um, but no 100%. Well, he's, yeah. Luke Evans is a hot dude. He's a good, he's an attractive man. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know that uh, Luke Evans Door was butt. was like uh, an older gay man mm -hmm. for the longest time, and then I saw his personal Instagram account where he's just like living his best life, like tanning in speedos. I was like, oh, I have a type now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. I fucking love him. Fucking yeah, I'd like Thor to see butt, him as Dracula. Though. Thor butt. Thor butt, dude. Thor butt. It's coming soon. What's Thor butt? Naked Thor. Thor butt, oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I told Aaron when that scene happens, I'm gonna look him dead in the eyes and go, "But I didn't know the Thor butt was a thing." <laughs> <laughs> I gotta show you the idea. Russell Crowe. Um, I'm doing a Gore the God Butcher shirt. Okay, here's here's my problem with your t-shirts. You don't got XLT. Big don't and have tall. What? Big and tall. I can make whatever. Four XLT. I guarantee I'll buy you all your. Here's shirts. my problem with that opinion. Have you ever asked? Well, no, because I don't really know you. And now I know you a little bit more and Customers better. Customers don't know me. That's true. They ask me for shit all the time. Sometimes they talk shit to me. <laughs> but I, I have a level of respect for you. Well, that's good. <laughs> so. Yeah, just be like, hey, I need a big and tall t-shirt. For real? Yeah. There's a lot of fucking designs that you made that I don't know if you'll bring back just for me. For uh, one. I'll bring back anything as long as enough people ask for it. Because this guy shows me some shirts all the time. He's like, fucking begs me. I was like, that's a cool shirt. I'm picking up Moon Knight shirts tonight. Oh, yeah? Pro Hagen. Like the one I already have? Or did you do a new design? No, the the new one. Oh. I'm not paying attention? Uh, Wait, me. aren't you doing... <laughs> Never mind. What? I, I don't know if, if it was public or not. Cause, what? Because sometimes I mix things up. To say it. Uh, the Hellfire Club. We don't know if we're doing that. We put it up for like people to vote on it. But it's just like... I'm for it. I do niche are you putting, stuff, are, but that's like pretty niche. Are you doing... Are you, is it like the X-Men Hellfire Club like design? Well, the idea is... So Red, when the show came out, was like, you should do Hellfire Club t-shirt. I go, Red, I know that making t-shirts is not your, <laughs> your thing, 
but I promise you by tomorrow, a hundred different companies will have a Hellfire Club t-shirt. Yeah. Hot Topic, Box Lunch, whatever small businesses, I mean, people expensive. were drawing their own versions. It's like, Stranger Things is a cultural phenomenon. Of course people are going to do shirts for it. But for the Hellfire Club specifically. So I was like, I promise you I'm not going to do a Hellfire Club shirt. And then Chris was like, you know what would be funny if we made fun of that Hellfire Club shirt by doing this. And it's a good idea, but I just don't. There's yeah. a lot of times where we'll come up with an idea and people are like, that's incredible, do it. I but like the Scarlet Witch one. But then we do it and people no. don't buy it. It's probably really niche, the, the little thing that you guys were Honestly, up with, right? if you could and do it. would be on a ringer tee. If you could give me 4XLTs, bro, I'll start buying shirts like every fucking I month. I can do 4XLTs. <clears throat> every month I'll buy a shirt. I mean, I do 4XTs, but I can do a tall. I'll buy a shirt every I fucking month. I print all the way up to 4X. How, many, how much would you charge me for that? It depends on design. I don't know. I don't think those shirts are that much more expensive. Probably like $2. He's gonna charge me two whole dollars. <laughs> For uh, well, no. I don't charge people. Uh, some companies will do the upcharge for like a two x, three x, and four x because yeah. it does cost more. Yeah. To print, it's a dollar more per size. Yeah. But I feel like me charging more for those sizes, I don't want to feel like I'm punishing people for being big. You have your own screen printer and everything. Or you go through a company. Yeah. I'll just buy you pro clubs and send them to yeah. you. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> That's fucking. But I just feel bad charging like extra money for people because because of them being bigger. I just eat the cost. It's whatever. It's already twenty five dollars for a t shirt. So fuck it. Hey, just let me know. I'll I'll, I'll keep in contact. Then we can what? fucking roll up to these premieres with fucking what gangster what? shirts. That Mononoke long sleeve. I know. It's a banger. It's like all Sean does is bangers though. So you you design all those t shirts yourself then, huh? For the most part. Yeah. How long I mean, does it take uh, you to so usually... So, it used to be just me for years. Right. And then my best friend Chris is now basically, like, my full-time artist. Um, occasionally, I'll reach out to other friends if I think, like, the style... Like, the design matches the art. Like, I, I, I'm fortunate enough now to have, like, a lot of really talented artist friends. So, like, I did a Ghost Rider one, and my friend Jed, his art style perfectly matched it. And I was like, oh, man, this would be cool if you did it. My friend Justin did the Haunted Mansion shirt with me. His art style was perfect for that. He lives in Massachusetts. All the stuff he does is really charcoal scary stuff. Chris is basically my full-time collaborator. If I don't do a design, it's Chris. And more often than not, what happens is I'll just be like, hey, this. And it's it, he was a customer of mine for years, and then we just became close friends. I need to introduce you to my cousin Martin. He's one of the greatest artists I know. Chris actually tattoos me too. Yeah. But – um. My family's all filled with artists, and then there's me. <laughs> you could be but artist. Then, but this then is I, your art. I was yeah, going to say, honestly. yeah, my, my cousin was like, you are not good with pen and paper, but you're good with this the, is art. the podcasting yeah. and everything. That's yeah. your form of like art. Anything like, that, and you write, though. Anything that's content creating is art. You ever go to Subway? But as far as designing t-shirts, sandwich. designing t-shirts is easy if you're a fan. How long does it usually take you to come up with the design and, and get it all? Sometimes. Up? I've heard this question so many Seconds. Times. Yeah, yeah, it and then to actually draw. I, do you actually the, hand draw everything too? Uh, I will usually like do a preliminary doodle. If it, if it's me finishing the shirt, yeah, I'll just do it on Procreate. Yeah, or I'll like pitch the idea to Chris, and then Chris will come up with his version, and then we'll like go over the notes and tighten it up. But it's easy to come up with stuff because I'm just making shirts that I want to wear. Yeah. So no, I, I look at those shirts and I'm like, I want to wear them too. All the source material is stuff that I'm into, so it's not hard to just think of those things. I'm hoping in the next fucking year I could just have. Mostly big shirts and everything. Nah, fuck, fuck everything else. Honestly, I I, I would like mostly big shirts too. <laughs> just big shirts and Knights of Horse shirts. That's all. I'm I want. proud to say that I own every shirt that I. Actually, you want that's actually shirt? not you true. Horse shirt. Huh? We get you a Knights of Horse shirt. Would you wear that shirt? Yeah. Hell yeah. You want a Knights of Horse shirt too, Bakes? I'll get you sure. a Knights of Horse shirt. I don't own. I actually don't own every shirt I've ever made. Really? Yeah, there were a couple like variant colorways that I did that sort of slipped through the cracks, and I forgot to save them for myself. I think myself. Myself. I think my favorite design you've ever done is the Ultron design. Which one? The, the text in the front. Oh, the unbroken one? That's a good one. People like that one. I think my it's my favorite? favorite design. Some people... And then I, I still have my old... Remember when you did the uh, Guardians shirt and you did the reverse print? Yeah. Yeah, I still that have the that The accidental one. colorway? Yeah, 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 yeah. You just made your podcast debut, buddy. Oh, fuck. You have <laughs> an accidental... Yeah. Colorway. I don't know. Unfortunately, even have that. it's all shot. It well, didn't, you know. It didn't live through the put, years. I think we got to put Bags in Movie Club. We yeah. got to do a vote. I mean, I've done. Um, out here. 
This I don't even know. Sammy how lives in Arizona too. They can link up. That's true. <laughs> Why? What's in Arizona? No, I was like, what's a panini? We got movie club. Hey, uh, that's someone who could design our shirt right there, bro. Hey, speaking of shirt designs, who did the Forsaken Lake one? Jason, Jason Perez. Okay, I need. You did him. the boardwalk I, one I too. Nine two seven. Uh, red. That was a good fucking shirt. Matt yeah. wears that shit all the time. Yeah, it's based on the Joker. Do you know it's it's based on the Killing yeah. Joke cover? Yeah. yeah. I like it a lot. Yeah, I need my own thing done with the. the Matt song. thinks he's a Joker fan, but I out Joker him every time. What's he, that? I said Matt thinks he's a Joker fan, but he's only a Ledger Joker fan, and it's he's like a, he's a movie Joker fan. Yeah, I like comic Joker. Comic Joker, in my opinion, is more than violent, especially like Killing Joke. The Three Jokers was good. Okay, Killing so Joke. So I is, got the Three Jokers book. Someone told me that I had to read it because everything after it. everything after New Fifty Two, I was kind of wishy washy with. Um, so I did get the Three Jokers. My friend Kevin is a really reliable... It, there's very few people that will give me a comic book opinion that I'm like, I gotta read it right now. Which is not like... I, I'm not trying to sound like a gatekeeper. Like, people tell me to read a lot of shit. It's all, yeah. I, read, all I do is read. Mm -hmm. But my friend Kevin is a, a reliable source of, like, good stuff for me. Um, he told me to read Three Jokers, so I got it. I didn't read it yet. I'm re uh, So right now I'm reading a book by Tinny Howard called Euthanauts. And it's about people, like, that are trying to travel... You know, it's like astronauts. It's a play on that. It's like traveling to the other side like to yeah. um, it kind of reminds me of the movie Flatliners like okay. people want to see what happens after you die yeah um, Tinny Howard is also doing the Vampire the Masquerade book she did Catwoman she's really like talented I would I, she's been writing for a while but I would call her an up and comer you know what I mean mm -hmm. like she's big, she's do, doing more stuff in like the bigger like she's written for DC and stuff like that I hate when people tell me that reading comic books is not reading. Well, reading the uh, ingredients on a cereal box is reading. Like, I've had <laughs> arguments. I'm like, they're like, it's got pictures in it. I'm like, and? If anything, that's giving me a visual of what I'm reading. That yeah, helps. so do science textbooks. And exactly. You, for that. you fucking bitch. But also, <laughs> like, having an image there with text helps, you know, people visualize. Not well, to sound corny, but ironically, when you're really into a comic book, you're not even looking at the picture sometimes. Honestly, you're just, you're just so invested into the story. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like I've had times I go back like and I had, the pictures. I had it like I've done that so many times like, oh fuck, I didn't even see the pictures. Yeah, Let me but, see what's going on. But it it helps in my opinion, I think it helps people with attention disorders. Yeah. Having a visual You and, rang? Exactly. My <laughs> point, right? So This is now going to be an ADHD podcast. Yeah, right. So <laughs> it, it it helps me. Yeah. It helps me. Uh, the visual uh, aspect is always going to be there because you can go back whether or not you're reading it and appreciate the art. Obviously, art is yeah. what brings you into a lot of comics. You see the covers and stuff like that. But most of the time, if you're really invested in a book, you're just reading. You're like firing through dialogue. I have first issues of Doomsday not, Clock. I have first issues of Heroes in Crisis. I have first issues. God, of, Heroes in Crisis was fucking. Great. It was so amazing. Clayman, speaking of art, Clayman's art in that. But I mean, um, that particular writer. The Vision comic, Mr. Miracle and all that, every fucking one of his books. He's especially good when it comes to a miniseries. I loved the way that not only was it drawn out, but the way it was story told of, like, them going to this, like, therapy in a way. Yeah. Of them talking. Like, that was so cool. Did you got read Mr. Miracle? No, but I want to. Mr. My dad Miracle was, really was good. especially good, especially if you're a parent. I thought it was fucking good. Um, the Vision comic book. All of his books are really good because they're sad. Yeah. I feel like the best stories are the saddest stories. Like, you're always going to... Tragedy is real. Yeah. So rather than, like, heroes triumphing and, like... The, some of, All the best books to me are the ones that are the saddest or the, you know... Yeah. They're the most tragic books are the best books. So Mr. Miracle Vision, Heroes in Crisis is really good. Heroes in Crisis was... X-23 will forever be one of my favorite Marvel characters because she was raised like a fighting dog and, like, basically abused. Yeah. Um, God, all the X-23 shit is really good. But all the best books are sad. Punk, punk Rock Jesus is one of my favorite comics. It's so good. The book's so fucked up. Though. It's so good, though. But it's eight issues. It's really easy to get through, but it's really good. Deadly Class has a lot of sad points. I know I'm reading book one, but I'm, I took a break from it because I'm trying to finish... I want to finish Boys book three. Yeah. I usually like to read uh, another book of Boys when the season's going on, like I said, to keep me invested. Not, it's not like I'm not going to be not invested, but it keeps me getting excited for like things that I could be seeing and stuff. There's just so many dang things to read, and what I've been doing is I, I read digitally... So like you know, try before you buy. Yeah, I'll read something digitally, and if it if it re, like if it's gripping enough, I can fly through it on digital. I'm always gonna buy the hardcover. Yeah, 
If I like something, I want the best version. Well, when Infinity War came out, I, I went on a binge of trying to find the entire Infinity Saga in comics, like That's all the graphic novels. A lot. It is. No, I and I got like a majority of them. Because Infinity, Infinity War, Infinity Gauntlet, Infinity, Infinity Watch, yeah. there's so much shit. There's so much, And dude. then Jim Starlin did those original graphic novels yeah. that are separate from those books. Yeah. They're just like self-contained ones. Yeah. He finally finished his Infinity Saga. That's fucking... The, like, his official statement was that he's done with the Infinity story. Yeah. You know what else I just read that re I got read into was Something is Killing the Children. Uh, James Tinian, he writes a lot of DC stuff. I'm sure you own a bunch of his books. He's like a, He was writing detective comics and stuff like that. I probably have a lot because I got a lot of detective comics. He has a book right now called Something is Killing closet. the Children, and it's fucking awesome. And it's one of those books that the title is literal, and there are kids that get killed in the book, and they do not pull any punches. Wow. There is a creature literally killing children. It's fucking crazy. It's such a good book, though. I showed it to Red, the and she's obsessed with it. Is amazing. She, she doesn't like Deadly Class. Huh? She doesn't like Deadly I know, class. I saw that. So she, she was like, you can have this book. I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some things aren't for everybody. Yeah. Um, I'm still, I, I gotta read Wanted still. I know it's really different from... Oh, yeah, it's so different. Yeah. 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 That's another guy that, do, that only hits. Yeah. Mark Millar. You've you've seen tons of movies. Mark Millar wrote most of those stories, yeah. and then Netflix is publishing co original comics now. Yeah, they did the Magic Order. That fucking book is so good. Yeah, I read. I was reading that for a little bit. It would be such an incredible show, but I was under the impression that the reason they were publishing his books is so that they could make shows out of them. Yeah, I was but thinking the same thing. They didn't do the Magic Wait, Order. Who's doing that? Amazon? No, Netflix. Netflix. Oh, Netflix. Oh. That's an old one. You guys. Any find any Mark Millar that. book, they make shows out of. Them. Kingsman, Secret Service. Did Wanted. Mark, did Mark Millar do Kick Ass? Yeah. Okay. All his books are fucking crazy violent. Like, I loved also uh, one of my favorites too was uh, Sin City. Which one? Sin City. Oh yeah. Frank Miller's Sin City is fucking. I love the I love the character of Marv. Uh, it's always been one of my favorite characters, and Mickey Rourke playing him, even though like, you barely understand him. <laughs> <laughs> Say man. that's uh, like fine coach you got there. Uh. I'm bitter because I got declined. I got turned away at the Frank Miller signing at LA Comic Con. No. Red was watching my table and I ran over there and the guy's like, yeah, we're cutting off the line. I was like, bullshit, the line just started. He's like, yeah, we're cutting it off. I was like, dude, I'll see you in the parking lot. <laughs> so mad. Yeah. I have yet to meet Frank Miller and it's not like he's getting younger. Literally, yeah. George Perez just died not that long ago. It's like all those guys are they're at that age now. All of our heroes are dying. Really sad. It's like me with wrestlers too. When I find out another wrestler, I'm gonna done. fucking laugh my ass off if any haunt fans came to this podcast expecting us to talk about. Anything. We did for uh, a little bit. No, we literally <laughs> gave like the we ten like minutes. brushed it off. Yeah, we're like, well, how was, so comic was books. Like how was Boardwalk? Yeah, I was tight. I was there for a little bit. Anyway, so comic read, books. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the moral of the story is haunt books. is cool, but have you read any comics lately? Yeah, books. Because that shit books is are cool. my favorite. Uh, I'm, like trying to, I'm trying to get through all my Berserk books. I was lucky enough, somebody, um, I put a wish list on my stream, and somebody bought me two through three. Oh, or the hardcovers? Yeah. Two through four. Let's go. Those look so good. So does the Helsing one. Yeah, yeah. They came out I, so good. Yeah. Viz Media did those, right? Dark Horse. Oh, that's I right. I love right, Dark yeah. Horse. Because they were, weren't they originally published by Viz Media? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Those are Dark Horse, like, Cowboy. big books. Like Hellboy. Huh? Like Hellboy. Yeah. Hellboy's one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, I, I, you saw that I have the volume one of That was another Helsing underrated movie, well. in my opinion. I gotta get that, because I love Helsing, but I, I gotta have all the Berserk... I'm, wow. I don't have all the Berserk books. David oh Harbour God. as Hellboy. That was... It's I'm not gonna lie, I, I actually really liked it. It was great. Um, they, I, to me, that movie was great, because they included a lot of stuff in the books. Yeah. Hellboy in Mexico, Hellboy in Hell, like all yeah. that shit. The the, the specific story, the, 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 the specific storyline. Super fan. Yeah, the specific storyline. I have all the library editions. Him being a descendant from the big like leather bound Lander. library editions of the books. I got those. They just re-released all of Hellboy in like the omnibus form, but those library ones are so sick. Like the big like. I, every time you can ask Aaron. Every time we go to the comic book store next to every time before we go to the movies, I always see the omnibus of Invincible. And I always go one fucking nah. day. One day. Get the library edition, 30 bucks each at um, Pulp Fiction. No disrespect to Atomic. Hey, you going to, you going to Midsummer? Hey, we got a hotel for Midsummer, by the way. I don't, I'm not going. Why? 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 There. I don't, no, I don't have a ticket. Bro, give me time, okay? People get hotels for Midsummer? I do. It's right I, there. I know, I just, I'm tired of doing the drive, especially when I have to come home, 
charge all my shit for the next day, upload all my footage, then go to sleep. Luckily, if I get four or five hours of sleep, then I gotta wake up extra early just to take a shower and get out there. The life of a YouTuber. Am I right? Sounds like a lot. It does. So this year we opted out to get I just go there, get, get in the costume and slide and leave. I've never gone as a guest and I want to. You're not on DK no more, aren't you? Um, I'm on the Facebook group. <laughs> Are you, are you you're not are you gonna be you're not gonna show the show? No, right? I don't do shows anymore. You're gonna are you gonna try to sell that this year or no? Uh no, I applied for a booth and they told me that they were full their t shirt vendors was full. They're missing out, bro. If I wanted to be annoying, I could have messaged Rick and been like, Hey, just I was curious, like Rick's always been a really good, good to guy to me. I wanna are you gonna go as guest at least? Uh I'm gonna work all this month probably. <laughs> really? That's not well that's not the end of July. Are you yeah. working? The oh, well, you're July, doing you're doing Comic Con, huh? No, no, you're not doing San Diego Comic Con. I'm just I'm just trying to work as much as possible to repair my life. <laughs> I will insane, be uh, the Can't only thing I'm doing is it. Mad Monster. I think is the beginning of July. If I go to that, and then I have to go to uh, I'll be going to Detroit at the end of the month. Detroit Rock City. I like Kiss, but not in concert. I saw them in concert and they sucked ass. Who Kiss? Yeah. I could tell they were sellouts. Never seen them, but it was my dad's favorite band. I, I like their music, but in concert it just didn't feel right. What's the best concert you've ever seen? Black Sabbath. Farewell Tour. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was listening to Ozzy's new song today. Motherfucker still has it, by the way. And I was like, Black Sabbath was probably the best show I've ever been to because when you think about the metal history, they're some of the first to start the genre of music, of metal. And to see the Godfathers of Metal one last time in concert to play their iconic hits was something special to me. One time I fell asleep during Black Sabbath. <laughs> Just ruined the whole story. And I love Black Sabbath. <laughs> you? You do? My mom and I went to Ozfest and they were playing. It was the year it was like Pantera, Black Sabbath. That sounds awesome. And I, it was a long day for a young buck. Yeah. And I fell asleep for just the tiniest bit, but I woke up for War Pigs. So, count it. Max Sabbath. <laughs> What's that face? Why you hate on Max Sabbath, bro? I'm not. You like McDonald's? What? Listen. What's the best concert you've ever been to? Me? I don't know, to be honest. I think the best performance I've ever experienced was Whitechapel at Vans Warped Tour. Because. Sometimes shit's just time and place. I'm because, going November. Honestly, they translate perfectly from record. Yeah. November 5th and 6th, Punk in the Park and OC. I watched Bad um, Religion and Dropkick Murphys. My Chemical Romance played the Black Parade all the way through, and they had like set pieces for every single song. And that was, uh, my friend was doing merch on that tour, and I was living in Florida at the time. I always play that. That, that was one of the best shows I've ever seen, and then every time I've ever seen Nine Inch Nails ever. Metallica oh. was pretty good. I liked Metallica. Misfits actually is up there for another good show. Which, which one? Original. Glenn Danzig. Yeah. I seen him. The Legacy Tour was sick. I seen him uh, when they reunited for the first time in December of 2017, I believe it was. And then I saw him the second time at Bank California Stadium, which is 2019. Whatever that was down in Irvine, the Legacy Tour, where he was doing the Sam Hain songs and all that, yeah. that was really good too. Oh, that was Danzig. Yeah. Yeah, he just did that recently, I think, in Ontario. Did He did a whole. Fun fact one time I slept on London May's floor. Because my friend Matt knew him. Yeah. And we wanted to go. We were in Echo Park to see this band Electric Frankenstein play. And London had let us sleep at his house. And I left the house. I go, what's that guy's name? He's like, London May. I was like, London May that was in Sam Hain? He goes, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Like, we just <laughs> slept in that dude's living room. We literally hopped a train up to Long Beach. He met us. He let us sleep at his house in Echo Park. That's fucking And then we cool. watched Electric Frankenstein and we went back down to San Diego. I was like, dude, what the fuck? That's nuts. He played on that Legacy Tour. Fucking he was like the studio drummer for Tiger Army, and they fired him. I was like, you can't fire London May. You can ask this guy. I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Misfits. I love the Misfits. I mean, he's I'm right there with you. <laughs> I'll slap the shit out of you. I you will not enjoyed, go see Thor. I went to all of the first Michael Graves tours with them, and they were all phenomenal, even if that guy is a I, total I, I haven't seen his Misfits, and I would like to, but... Dude, they I, so I've, good life. I've always preferred Glenn Danzig's Misfits, because well, I like yeah. his songs. I've always preferred AFI. <laughs> no, not that one. No, shut your mouth, open your eyes. Black Sills. But even their Misfits covers are so good, dude. I've I've gone to I went to every AFI tour 
from very proud of you to like right when they start like at the end of Art of Drowning. Dead I'd Kennedys seen, was a good show. I've seen them a thousand times. I like every single AFI record. I respect that. I really do like the early stuff though. And this is the point in the podcast where people are like, Whoa. what are these old fucking idiots talking about? Hey, Dead Kennedys though, man. Killed that was another good concert I went to because right after they all got off stage and signed. I actually have a ticket up there. It's autographed right under the Aussie balloon. That's an autographed Dead Kennedys ticket. From, oh. Yeah. The guitar we'll player, it. singer, and drummer. Kill the poor. Steady yeah. banger. Nazi punks fuck off. Yeah. Green Room. You ever seen that fucking movie? Oh, yeah. Great fucking film. Love Amazing it. Amazing film. Great film. One of your only favorite A24 films, huh? That's not really it wasn't, A24. It wasn't originally A24. A24, yeah. We have this conversation all the time. Yeah. Yeah. X was good. I, was so I didn't fan. see X, but Corey was saying it was fucking great. I love yeah, X. He, he'll suck every A24 film. Relax. So. I'm just saying. <laughs> Relax. They're all X good. was good. I don't know why you hated it. X was good. I didn't the concept. The concept what, behind A24 it. A24 movies aren't good. I didn't care for X. Hereditary? Uh, I think Hereditary was... Uh, Psychologically Careful. fucked Careful. me up. Uh, Careful. I think it wasn't bad, but I don't think it was as amazing as everybody... I wasn't a fan of Midsummer. I honestly I didn't, wasn't. I didn't like Midsummer. Huh. I only was a fan of it because it just felt like it was... Good. Like, there was something with Hereditary that legitimately fucked me up. And then I watched Midsummer and I'm like... I think both movies okay. did a really good job of making no, they me did feel a, uncomfortable. For a, yeah, psychological horror, yes. Yeah. They did a good job, but... I think it's the objective. Was Green Knight, A24? Yes. Yes. I really like that film. I haven't yeah. seen that yet. I have it, though. Because it's the closest film to Dark Souls we'll ever get. <laughs> Fucking The Disaster Artist. That was good. Was that A24? Yeah. Okay, then I take it back. A24 has made bad movies. <laughs> you didn't like The Disaster Artist? I fucking love that movie. That guy's such a... I don't care. I about feel him. like at this point we're bent, we're abusing a mentally ill man by exploiting him. Tommy Wiseau, man, He's the greatest fucking director of all time. It's one of the greatest movies ever written. It's starting to get hot in here, huh? Are you going to San Diego with me? When? To pick up shirts. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Fine then. But I I have to get home at a decent time. Well, San Diego, you better we better end this shit now then. Spoiler yeah. alert. You probably won't. As long as I get, like, six hours of sleep, I'm okay. What, are you doing what is six hours of sleep? When are you waking up? Uh, eight o'clock. Is What's tomorrow that? your appointment? Yeah. What time? Oh, shit. What time? 10.15. Oh! My audition's on Sunday. Yeah, if my audition was on Sunday, I'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll... I'm gonna go in there and be like... Boom. They always give me shit whenever I do silent auditions. Like, I've had people be like, can you do... Like, what would that character sound like if you talked? I'm like, I, do, I don't. He finally followed me on Instagram. So I won't. Uh, it actually made me very happy fanboy today. So you'll learn that about Let's me. I'm I didn't know I was I'm looking at all these <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. I just dude. saw that and I was like, oh, whoops. I, you, you'll know very quick about me that I fanboy about a lot of things. I love, I love fanboying. I fanboy about a lot of things. Fucking Dieterman always makes fun of me for it. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, but to be fair, Dieterman would make fun of anybody for anything. Yeah, that's true. My first time meeting Dieterman, I hated him because I didn't I didn't know him. Yeah, and even if I'm a fan of something, I'm not like I'm not going to be a kiss ass. Yeah. So Dieterman was in Warehouse P with my really good friend Chris. This guy Chris Ruiz, uh, John, one of John Cook's best friends, like yeah. in, in our little friend circle. He was a ghost town monster for years. He was in a Hatchet High with John. Fucking he cookbook, in, bro. He was in Warehouse P talking to Dieterman. And I remember I walked up and I made a joke to Chris because I have a rapport with Chris. And I think, if I remember correctly, Dieterman goes, who the fuck is this guy? And I go, who the fuck are you? Like, like what's up, motherfucker? You want to fight? <laughs> and I think he, like, respected me after that. Because everybody's like, you know, I get that, like, who he is as a monster. Yeah. And I respect that as a fan, but I'm not going to let anybody talk to me like that. <laughs> who the fuck are so you? So it's just funny, like, our introduction to each other was like, a, I was like, I'm going to fucking fight this dude in the parking lot. <laughs> like, Sounds like something you would do. Friend. I think that's so why I like Dieterman so much. Be on tonight, then. <laughs> huh? You're not gonna be on later on. Fuck tonight, no. <laughs> no, I ain't getting. Uh, how's tonight. Mooch doing? That's why he hasn't been online all night. On. I, oh, I don't know. He, who's <laughs> not online? Paul. Who's Paul? Mooch. Ah. Uh, Vertigo. Vertigo. He was on Boardwalk last year. Someone needs to buy me some Fortnite skins, man. Um. Yeah, not me. Bro. I don't play that game, but you know. <laughs> oh, I forgot to say. How about I buy T-shirts and then his account got hacked. 
Yeah. yeah. My, my, my Epic Games account got stolen. What the fuck? Did you report this shit already? Yeah, I emailed them yesterday. Bro, we're trying to play Fall Guys. That's why I couldn't play last night. Fort Guys, Fall Night. Yeah. You trying to play Fall Guys too? We can have a good time on that one. Um, Dead by Day Nights of Horror. That's me. Try not to get scared, champion. King, not, king, not, king of uh, Kingdom Farts. What? King. What is try not to get scared, champion? Oh, it's a competition me and my you friends know do every year. Hey, Mike, you know it's bullshit if we're talking about it's video games? It's currently vacant right now. What is it, though? So we basically go to haunts, and we go through mazes, and whoever gets scared the most um, loses, and whoever walks out with the least amount of scares or being scared... And you're the try not to get scared champion? No, currently it's vacant, but uh, I Why was... Why vacant? Uh, because we tied last year. And so now this year is the fifth anniversary, and uh, someone's getting Yeah, but I think that even if it comes to a draw, the champ retains their title. Then I'm a three-time champion, back to back to back. That's the case. Do you ever get scared? We got we to gotta scare them. You got to walk around with that belt so people can see it and try to fuck you up. Yeah, the problem is they don't let me take that into knots and all that, and especially Horror Nights. Um, so. Here. Wait, they won't let you take that in the park? Probably not, because it's, it's going to be, in their eyes, considered a weapon. Which well, I could see how that's possible. These hands are registered as deadly weapons. <laughs> or I could just give it to you in the haunt box, and then you just put it in an area, and I just come pick it up. Everybody listening, you if you scare scared? him, I'll give you Crip Cash. Do we still use Crip Cash? Fuck no. Never mind. I fucking dare you. Please I wish. scare me to hell. Scare him. I fucking dare you. Pull a gun on him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this, that's a good way to end it right there. I'll Kill him. That. Stab him. What? Kill him. <laughs> Kill him. Do it. Do we got it. knives, sharp sticks. <laughs> yeah, but I made that last year. First Sorry, year. I didn't mean to end the podcast. Don't pull a gun on him. No, we're good. No, you're Unless good. it scares him, then he doesn't get the belt. No. This is going to be deep, but I really don't fear death. Oh, shit. I don't think anyone should be afraid of me. Yeah. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ha-ha. <laughs> Ha-ha. <laughs> No, I really don't. I don't. Corny. I don't. I, I just, if it's my time, it's my fucking time. I respect that. I'm terrified of dying. Oh, yeah. See, I'm totally I like, afraid. I think, I think right now I just don't have much to, I wouldn't say live for, but like. Oh, uh, yeah, well. What, one of those things where it's just like, I, I don't have a lot of responsibilities that like, like you, for example. How old are you? Yeah, I'm 20, going to be 24. Yeah, man, it comes with age though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I spent most of my 20s not knowing what the fuck I was doing. And here I, I, I kind of have an idea what I'm doing. I just <laughs> don't know. Where it's gonna go in the next five years, but we'll find out. We'll That's we'll... life, baby. That's hey, life. My thing is with death, Sinatra. The reason why I'm afraid is uh, I'm afraid of, of losing people. Yeah. Like every every. It sucks every... to think that things are finite and that you can't possibly be with the people you want to be with forever. Yeah. Right. So That's like, awful. so gaining these like relationships that you have and the people that you love, and then knowing one day that that they're not gonna be there or you're not gonna be there and you can't take them with to you. To me, the most terrifying thing, selfishly, is the idea of not being yourself anymore. But yeah. there's, like, a, a cap on I'm yourself. Just, yeah, I'm just more afraid of, like, losing the people I care about. Like, Unless we're talking about death as a character, then, yeah, you should be scared of me. I'm fucking scary. Look at me. Look at me. I do, I do a scare. Sometimes you make me laugh, though. <laughs> you just make me laugh. Yeah, I'm just a fucking black fucking metal. Make I'm, a black fucking me- I'm a black metal mime. Yeah, that's all. I like the hoodie. That is the best <laughs> description. <laughs> I'm a black metal mime. <laughs> but sometimes you'll you'll give people these looks even though they're terrified and I'll see it and be like one of these like still got the cane it's ironic the cane that I found a way uh, to the silently cane talk shit yeah. to people can I have I, it I feel like even back when I was you in won't. boardwalk and I could use my words you can hurt people's depends. feelings way harder with silence and it's hilarious how you gonna go if you want then it depends depends if I go back or not oh you're if gonna wear you don't depends? go back can I have it yes oh if I don't go back then yeah oh hell yeah I'm gonna hang it right there also, before uh, we end this podcast, I just want to let you know that if I pass my audition, then I'll see you guys this year. And if I didn't pass my audition, then fuck you. Fuck me or whoever. Oh. Whoever's watching. Well, that's you. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> nah, man. Good luck. You have you. Then it's been you. real. Yeah, that's going to be cool. I, yeah. I, I'll be there. I don't know how many times I'll be there. I don't know if they're going to release a pass this year. But yeah, I'm trying not to be nervous I'll for probably tomorrow. Probably three nights a week. I'll leave Friday, you Saturday, Sunday. Probably. You just you do that three? drive every weekend or... Oh, well, you do th- Thursday through Saturday, right? Oh, maybe. Thursday, Friday, Saturday? I don't know. Then go home Sunday? You said three days, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I said Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that's what he said. I don't know which three days. We'll see. Okay. I gotta get hired first. I feel like... 
It, it's more fun. Mad to respect Friday, Saturday, for you. Sunday. What do you that. What do you usually stay? You got friends to stay with? I usually stay. If I don't stay in your Belinda, with my best friend's family, I usually um, I fuck. I'm eating chips. This last season, my ma uh, main makeup artist and I got an Airbnb. Nice. Yeah. Or rather, someone we knew's house, we stay. rented it out. Yeah, I don't. I don't stay very far from us. <laughs> he lives right behind the park. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I pick him up all the time. We go see. Uh, What's the next movie? Thor, huh? Thor. You guys see the black phone? I do. It's Gore fucking the, beautiful. Thor the God Butcher. Yeah. Ethan Hawke. Great actor. All right, dude, let's hit the road. Thanks. You're okay. the man, man. I appreciate you coming on. You're a good man, man. What's uh, what's where they could follow you for all your store stuff and everything? Uh, so my store's Instagram account is at ROTN616. Got you. Or you can follow at GT... Oh, shit, I forgot the Instagram. <laughs> is it GTSXDeath? Yeah. At GTSXDeath. If you want to see pictures of me dressed as a goth mime. <laughs> Mike Biggs, everybody. Thank you for being on the show in person. We made this happen for the weekend. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification where every time I put up a new video. Hit that like button, leave some comments down with the bags. Show them how much you appreciate them. I'm Anthony from the Knights 4. See you guys next week for another show.